together with Neuro Sports Bitch. Yeah, the twins, they be checking in. Stacking up green is the scene that you're stepping in. Winning is a trend, and we stay making dollars. Nerd talk with the sports bet scholars. Yeah. We are live. Welcome back to another edition of the Euro Sports Bet Show. My name is Nicholas Earl. We'll be joined here by my brother Tim in a little bit. Uh, but we've got uh, plenty to go over for today. We will start with Guardians Red Sox because that game first pitches in 40 minutes. Then we will go to the NHL card. Then we'll come back to the M uh, MLB card. Uh, so uh, that is how the, the uh, show is going to go. We're going to start with the one, the 11 10 game, and then we'll go into the regular scheduled pro or uh, into the NHL and then to the MLB. Um, but before we get into today's games, before we get into today's slate, we'll take a look back at what happened yesterday. One one right, one one wrong in the world of sports betting. Followed up a really bad um, Saturday with an awesome Sunday. I swear, my days are either really, really good or really, really bad as of late. Um, so it started off really nice. Pirates plus 160 was a winner. Got the team total over three and a half for the Blue Jays. They win five nothing. The full game over eight and a half does come up short there. Uh, Atlanta first five somehow is minus 120 over on FanDuel. Cash that. And then never in doubt the minus one. Braves down to their last strike. Three on home run for Marcelo Zuna. The, um, the Miami Marlins lose another baseball game. What a shame. Spoiler, I'm already on the Giants money line again today or on the Giants' money line against the Miami Marlins today. What a game that was between the Cleveland Guardians and the New York Yankees. The over 8.5 was a winner in the bottom of the fifth when that was 4-4. And then never in doubt Cleveland Guardians' money line at plus 115. They score three in the bottom of the tenth inning after the Yankees score two uh, to um, to win that game 8-7. Um, Houston, Texas, first five under five was 5-2 five at the end of the five, so that one lost. And the White Sox first five uh, was a loser there. Colorado for me was a was a, a sweep. Even though if you guys bet it on any other book other than the one I bet it on, it would have been a one and one split. Had the first period, they win two nothing in the first period. I had the full game bet on bet three sixty five. So when they went up three nothing, I got the early payout. Uh, and as you guys know, the Vegas Golden Knights scored three goals in the third period and one in overtime. So if you guys bet that game on anywhere else other than Bet365, unfortunately, you lost with the uh, with the Avalanche money line full game yesterday. Uh, and then to end the night, a beautiful game for the San Diego Padres. They win six three over the LA Dodgers to complete the plus one or to complete the night plus one thirty five winner. And yesterday, and I posted this on Twitter as well, was I think my one of my one of my I think my biggest my second biggest like the uh, odds hit of all time because uh, I was given a $10 free bet from uh, FanDuel and I decided to go for a bomb. I had the Pirates money line, Orioles money line, Blue Jays money line, Braves money line, Guardians money line, Mets money line, and ended with the Padres there at plus 81.19. Uh, so $10 turned into a hundred, uh, 800 and uh, about $812, which was so much fun. Um, I do not advocate for parlays, but if you have free bets, like they give you bonus bets, free bets like DraftKings gives bonus bets away, so does FanDuel, so does a bunch of these other books. If it's like free bets or insurance tokens and things like that, go for bombs. Make your big parlays with the free bets. If you're going to be doing parlays, use the free bets to do that. Don't use or don't, don't like actually bet or boost. Those are the only two, only times I advocate for those is when you can boost them or when they're free bets. And that's exactly what I did yesterday. I went for a bomb and it smacked. And that was a glorious end to my night. Also, I kept throwing boosts at Scotty Scheffler um, throughout the week, which ended up turning a tournament I had no money into, into about $125 profit on that. So nice little, nice little uh, bit of change there with, with the, the Masters as well. Overall, a really strong day. 
Um, can't complain. Finished up 6.8 units. Uh, I was. I also went through my baseball numbers so far this season and off to a really solid start for me personally in the MLB. I believe we're number one on the site as well in uh, on picks and parlays. Uh, my team totals are seven and three this year up 4.04 units. My money lines are 43, 42, and five up 6.82 units. I lost the one parlay I made. Uh, my spread bets, basically my minus ones are nine, eight, and two up 0.41 units. And my totals are 22, 15, and four up 5.4 units so far in baseball, 81, 69, and 11 up 15.67 units. So baseball has been off to an awesome start so far. And I look to continue that into today. I have, all, I have moved on the Red Sox game and I've also moved on the Nationals game and I've moved on the Guardians game as well. So, um, so that, that's kind of the way uh, yesterday uh, was a great day. Hopefully today is a good day as well, and we'll get into that there. We'll head into the chat, and then we'll head into the first game here. Untouchable thing. Good morning, gentlemen. What is good, Untouchable? Had another solid night of hockey yesterday. Blues in the under, Hurricanes puck line, Vegas money line, and Arizona plus one and a half in the over. There you go. I am pissed I, I laid off that over in, in the Flames game. Uh, but with that being said, I still went two and zero. Technically speaking, M me wise on, on the NHL, I kept it simple, and I'm fine with that. Um, I also had a. Uh, they also gave uh, Caesars had a North Carolina promo uh, for that Hurricanes game, and I was able to get Hurricanes money line and both teams to score even money. So, um, walk the tightrope. I made minus 350 Hurricanes into a nice plus 585 same game parlay with the Blackhawks first period full game puck line and wow that is threading a, a needle right there. Yotes first period was nice too, just couldn't cash the full game. Yeah. Oh, there. We go. Uh, what's good, Tim? What up? What up? Uh, the only thing that disappointed me hockey wise was USA losing to Canada in the gold medal game. I he wasn't even paying attention to that. Baseball was nice. Orioles run line, Nationals first five, and Arizona run line. Maybe sweat a four, a nerfy four teamer. There you go with the Pitt, you know, uh, Pitt Yankees, uh, Marlins, and Nationals. Nick, I'll, I'll quickly put because uh, uh, I, I was in here for recap. Um, real quick for the site, six and zero. Um, Red Sox money line, Pittsburgh money line, Baltimore run line, Atlanta run line. So two never in doubters. Mets under and the over in the Guardians game. So, uh, you know, I'm quite happy with that. There you go. Anyway, sorry, keep going. The best players in the world are born in Canada. In fact, it was invented here. How can anyone be disappointed with that? Woo. I didn't even know what's going on. All I remember was, I think it was the 20 unders. Uh, United States won it in Sweden. So, uh, good morning. Good morning, sunshine. Good morning, real deal prime. The NBA was the only thing that sucked. Missed out on a small eight-teamer because the Timberwolves suck. And we will be getting back in the NBA tomorrow for playing games. So that yeah. that's that's something I'm actually looking forward to uh, talking about is the NBA playoffs. Which actually, Tim Caesars has a uh, had a has a promo where if I put ten dollars on a future, I get a five dollar uh, bonus bet. I'm trying to figure out which team to do it on. I kind of want to take a little bit of a longer shot. And the one I had circled was eighteen to one on the Sixers, the uh, just as a longer shot. Like that, that's that's a that's a big line for I a team. I really that, like the Knicks. I mean, I I can be I can be talked into. See, here's the thing, I would like to see who the Knicks play, because if the Knicks get the Heat in the first round, I'm more interested in the Knicks rather if the Knicks get the Sixers in the first round. Uh, because I can see the Sixers making a run as a seven or eight seed. Like if the if the Sixers get the Celtics, I think they're alive. Mm, maybe. Like, and, and you know they're going to be a monster price. So we'll anybody see. against them will be a monster price. Yes. Yeah. Uh, what's up, guys? Going with Red Sox money line for early baseball. We've already moved on that. I've moved on that game. We'll be talking about that once we're done with the chat. But if you didn't hear Tim, the way we're doing our show today. Red Sox, Guardians first, then the NHL, then back to the MLB. Got That's it. We're in, yeah. uh, oh, man, no Tim A. I know. It would have been really nice to have no Tim A, all right? Just kidding. Uh, yo, yo, what's good, Markel? Uh, go Detroit Red Wings. Two games left. We can do it and get into the playoffs. I think the Red Wings get the last playoff spot. Um, I, I, think, I, I, think, I, I think it's going to be the Red Wings. I think the Islanders lock up the Met three tonight, um, and we'll get into that game in a, in a little bit. 
And when you look at the schedules of the other teams around, the Red Wings get the Canadians and the Canadians. The Capitals, I believe, get the uh, the Bruins tonight, then the Flyers. The Penguins get the Predators and the Islanders. Um, so I think definitely the easiest schedule is is this Detroit Red Wings team. So we'll see. Red Wings making the playoffs. Ottawa's a lot. Ottawa could just be – like Ottawa could be a, a, an annoying spoiler team. So Ottawa? You mean Montreal? Montreal, sorry, Montreal. I'm hoping Ottawa is a spoiler team tonight. I, I need the Rangers to lose tonight any way, shape, or form. It could be an overtime because then I'd have a plus 240 money line ticket with the Hurricanes tomorrow uh, mm-hmm. against the, the Blue Jackets, which would be really nice if they can win the Metro. Um, I want I, I want the Islanders to play the Rangers in the first round. I truly do. Um, let's get paid, y'all. Yeah, let's do that stuff, Gio. Uh, what up, my guy? Let's get uh, – what up? Uh, do the Fakers get into the playoffs? Uh, no. Got a rematch set up. Yeah. Um, I I don't know. I, I want to take a look at the market in that game. No, they don't. Supness, what's good, Lex? Um, what's good, Nicholas Handy? And by the way, if you're if you're in the plans right now, you'd rather play the Thunder than the Nuggets, right? Correct. Yeah. Nope. 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 I bet parlay on regular. I'm doing good at parlays. Uh, are always good. No, uh, we don't advocate for parlays here. But if you have a free bet, go for a bump. That's the way I do it, uh, and that's the way I'm going to be doing it after yesterday. <laughs> it hit, <laughs> so that was nice. NBA playoffs are here. Uh, about time now. The real and best sports start. Yeah, the uh, Stanley Cup playoffs. Stanley Cup playoffs. And by the way, Tim, this week we get the NBA playoffs and the Stanley Cup playoffs starting. Yeah, uh, it's, it's the, I, I only care. I only care about the NBA because my team's in the NBA one. It, it's, it's the best time of year. It truly is. It truly, truly is. Uh, yeah. Warriors. Um, we'll lose to the so- and the Kings in the first round. All right. Lose to the Kings in the first round. In the play-ins. Yeah. Uh, I, I got I to gotta look at that game more. Uh, betting golf was easy. Scotty Scheffler never in doubt. Plus 450, plus 175, plus 110. I end up uh, – yeah, they kept giving me boost throughout the week, and after Brooks Kepka had a shit first round – I, I, I end up just using all my boosts on Scotty Scheffler. I got plus 107, plus 210, plus 470, plus 132, plus 109, and even money. So I had about $75 invested in Scotty Scheffler, which turned a profit of $127. And I don't bet golf. So those were small bets for me. Yeah. I'm high on the Canes and Leafs from the East, Vegas and Oilers from the West. I am high on the Panthers and the Avalanche. Those are my two teams. Hey. Take out the Leafs, put in the uh, the Lightning, and we've got the same teams, buddy. I think the Lightning are going to beat the Bruins in the first round of the playoffs. They could. Now, if the Lightning get the Panthers in the first round, then that's a little bit different. Yeah, AD hurt no. again, but shouldn't. Yeah, I'm a massive Sense fan tonight. Me too. I got, I got, I got the Hurricanes plus two forty to win the division, Robert. So I would love an Ottawa Senators win tonight, and I have no reason to bet it right now. So, I have no reason to bet the Senators for that game. So, yeah. What's up, my guys? Let's get it. Let's catch today. Hit the like button. People show some appreciation. Subscribe and share. Tim A, you know the rest of the same, my dog. Let's get it. Yep. Don't even trip. Yeah. No one's even close to Matthews. 69. Uh, next is 55, and that's insane. If so I'm Matthews Sheldon. Matthews is MVP, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. No. He's Rocket Richard, but Nathan McKinnon is Art Ross. Hmm. And if I'm Sheldon Keefe, Matthews is done for the regular season. Leave him on 69, right? It's the naughty number. <laughs> no, they're not going to do that. I know, I know. Uh, Road Warriors will be eight and knock off OKC in the in six. Milwaukee will be in the in five. No, I saw. I seen your NBA predictions, Tim. All right, go. so you know that I'm not with you on that at all. Yeah. Took a break from gambling last weekend. Feels so good, Loki. Yeah, I wish I could take breaks sometimes, but it is what it is. Had a nice 50 cent bet in the Dodgers game for one plus hit and one plus stolen base at 1040. I saw that in the group chat. That was sick. Yes, sir. What's good, Justin? Mike Glennon. What's good, Mike Glennon? I think the Red Wings get in too. Yeah. When you play the Canadians and the Canadians, you absolutely should. Uh Astros minus three is the stacks pod. Wow. 
Justin going up against his Atlanta Braves with the la- with the last place Houston Astros right now. Are they the last place Houston Astros? Yeah. Uh, they might not be anymore. Uh, yeah, they're still the last place Houston Astros. And, and Tim, we are two and a half weeks into the season. The Oakland A's are a game out of first place. Go Oakland. Yeah, the Rangers are 8-8 eight and eight in first place right now. The That's Rangers weird. are not a good baseball team. I, I, I'm trying – they won the World Series last year. Cool. They overachieved as hell last year. I hope people know that. And that's and this is why the Astros are still the favorite to win the division. It's the last place team right now. We're only two and a half weeks in, but yeah. Lakers making playoffs. No. Yeah. And yeah, I don't know. I uh, can't wait to see who gets the president's trophy for the NHL because you know I'm playing I'm playing, I'm going to fade them in the first round. Fair. Devil's money line, Rangers money line, uh, one unit each. No, I'm on I'm on the Islanders uh today, but we'll get into that. Nick, the Jets swept the Avs and blew them out all season. They are the higher seed and have home ice, and the books are still giving us plus 115 to beat the Jets. What does that say? To bet the Jets, what does that say? It says that the Avalanche win the series in six. That's what that tells me. And I see something very similar in the NBA as well, which is why when you see – I'm going to post them probably on Twitter, and I'll probably post them before my cap it too as well. When I bet futures for the – when I bet series props – Colorado is going to be one of them, and the Phoenix Suns are going to be yep. another one because they're minus one fifteen. Yeah. I'll also say already Timberwolves. I've already got two few uh, two series props or three: um, Suns, Pacers, and the Clippers. Clippers, see that Clippers looks really interesting because I know a lot of people like the the Mavs. Yep. Wow, we have a very lively chat today. Yes, oh, yeah. We do. That's good. Milwaukee will be Indian five. No. I think India puts a fight in this series. Flip it. Flip it. Indian five. For sure, taking the abs over the Jets. Don't fall for the trap. McCarr and McKinnon are that good uh, to win a series. I think the Avalanche can win the Stanley Cup still. I have Avalanche to win the West at plus 475 and Avalanche to win the Cup at 850. So I think the Avalanche are still Stanley Cup caliber. I want to Tiger Woods. Yeah. Red Sox and Brewers money line today. What's your thoughts? I am on the Red Sox first five. Uh, that's that's the my bet for the for this eleven o'clock game, which we will get into as soon as we're done with the chat. Uh, Predators will be my dark horse to win the West. I kind of like that. Who are they playing the first round? They're the they would be the wild card one, which means they would play the Canucks in the first round. I really like them. And, and, and here's the question: Is Predators Canucks in the first round? Canucks are what minus one twenty five, minus one thirty. Like I don't, think, I don't think they'll be that big of favorites as a division winner. And I think there will be, I'll, I think there will be maybe one division winner that is a dog in their series. That'll be the Boston Bruins. I guess no, Lightning. no. Or at, at most, the Lightning will be, or the uh, the Bruins will be minus one twenty five. Yeah. Yo, 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 what's good, Joe Crypt tonight? McKinnon should win the heart, period. Yes. Absolutely. He is the – this season, he's the best player in hockey. This season. ESB, my guys, I'm ready to cash. And McKinnon being the best player in the West is the reason why the Colorado Avalanche are going to the Stanley Cup this year. Vegas scoring three goals in the third and winning in overtime. Yeah. Uh, That's crazy. I, hey, I, I'm happy I bet it on BetMGM. So, yeah. Yeah, bet three six five. Yeah, bet bet three six five. Yeah. Um, morning was good one. You know, I had that live under at Big Money LMAO. Yeah, take VGK their next game over Anaheim. They will probably be minus four hundred favorites. No, thank you. As a Braves fan, I got the Astros plus one hundred four. Now minus one hundred three as stacks. There you go. I'm kind of interested in the Houston Astros in that game. I kind of am, and we'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, nobody wants. Uh, to win more than McKinnon, he's a real dog. He he's unreal, McKinnon. I uh, just got attacked uh, by birds after I seen the birds nest on the roof, and I wanted them out. Ouch! Uh, Avalanche, real uh, the Avalanche really uh, uh, screwed me, losing to the Jets. Yeah, that was, I mean, and here's the thing, and I'm glad I held off that entire game. I saw them down three nothing at the end of the first period. I'm like, do I lie bet them? Then I saw four nothing. Do I lie bet them? Saw five nothing. Do I lie bet them? Never lie bet them. 
So, hmm. uh, but start the day uh, off at one fifty-five. Now, Boston first five money line thoughts. I have moved on Boston first five. We will be getting into that. Yeah, there. Fanduel Jets at plus one sixteen. Yeah. Um, Avalanche are alive for the cup for sure. Absolutely, they are. I don't think they care about their placement. Yeah. Uh, they are begging for Jets money. I think they absolutely are. Here's the thing, though, that you can make the argument for the Jets is, number one, they'll have home ice advantage. Number two, they have the best goaltender in the series. Hellebuck is the best home goaltender in hockey this year. He's the best in the winner. He's going to win the best. And I know a lot of people are not a fan of Hellebuck. He's going to win the best this year. Um, so they do have the goaltending advantage, but we saw what that got him last year against the Vegas Golden Knights, and that was absolutely nowhere. So we'll see. I'm thinking... I want to take a swing with the Sharks and Canadians and the Sens, too. Maybe the Sens, too. I don't hate it. I would love a Sens win, but that's just me thinking about my futures. But, yeah. Uh, yes, I know you're uh, I, I know you're with Tim on my picks, but, against, uh, but been against me all year on my two teams, and it's all good. Uh, there you go. Fair enough. Sabres, Bruins, and Penguins. I am on the Sabres already. I am on oh, the Buffalo yeah. Sabres already. We will get into that. Yes. Who's firing up that old barbecue uh, today, boys? What a beautiful day outside, finally. Yes. Question, do my wings get in? I would no. have to say yes. I think the Red Wings are the wild card two team. I do think that. Um, and we will get into it there. Uh, Lakers and Warriors are going to win tomorrow. Maybe. No. I, I need nope. I need to still cap them. I, I I'm not gonna I'm not saying yeah I'm on this I'm on that because I, I don't know yet. I'm against it's, both. Yeah, and untouchable. You you said it wrong. It's the final Sabers day of the season. Sabers money line and the under for untouchable. Yes, this chat is live. Two days reminds me of the NFL chat. Yeah, we're 22 minutes into the show and we still haven't gotten to a game yet. Um, <laughs> the usual Capitals money line and the under. There you go. Pacers win series versus Choke Rivers. Sign me the F up. Yeah. Uh, and I think I saw a plus 190, plus 195 for the Pacers. Yeah, yes. I'm going to take a shot with the Pacers probably. Pacers to the Eastern Conference plus Finals. 30. Wow. Pa Pacers to the Eastern Conference Finals. That's right. All right. That's a little too far. Pretty uh -huh. sure the, wild, uh, the final wild card spot will be determined on the final day of the season. It absolutely will. Uh, I kind of lean that uh, Red Sox first five run line. I'm on the Red Sox first five plus minus 135. Red Sox full game. Guardians bullpen is taxed from yesterday. I can see that as well. I can absolutely see that as well. Uh, seven lefties against a first start. Curry cutter is elite. Four games the past three days for the Guardians. Short turnaround uh, to play. 11 a.m. short time. Yeah, I absolutely agree with that. Absolutely agree with that. Oilers are going to win the West. Uh, they're going to win the West. They should, but I don't know. Um, Fred's money line. Uh, put those dirty flightless birds out, dusty flightless birds out. Yes. Uh, I would love that. I bet the over in that game. We'll get into it. Uh, my, my, oh, I, uh, am I good? I think so. Yeah, no, my my, I got the, I got the spinning pinwheels of death there for a second. Yeah. Nick, I do wake up in a cold sweat with nightmares about the Avs losing the first round. Yeah, they did last year, and I remember back on them last year. Tigers and Mets for Nathan. Uh, this is a live Q and A stream, I guess. Yeah, we'll get into some games. We have we have how many, 41 people in the YouTube chat today. So there you go. LOL draw for the Islanders in the over. I would be very happy with the draw tonight with the Islanders. I'm fine with that. We're on the verge of the Stanley Cup playoffs, the greatest event in sports. Of course, the chat is live. Stanley Cup is the best playoffs in sports. I will take no further questions. The only thing, that, the only one that comes anywhere close is March Madness, and the the thrilling action of the Stanley Cup playoffs. I think surpasses March Madness. That's college, just my opinion. College baseball. college baseball. That's just my opinion. College baseball is fun. I, yeah, the atmospheres are great. Nothing compares to the Stanley Cup playoffs. So, like when you talk about playoffs, talk about watching a game in overtime when this the game can end at any second. It's just it's just fun. Uh, stressful as a fan, but fun. 
Rangers money line against the the uh, the, Texas, uh, the Tigers and the Orioles run line. There you go. The Mets have speed. The Mets have pitching. Yeah. The entire city of Denver and the state of Colorado are very, very nervous about this series with the Jets. It's not going to be an easy series. It's not. Uh, but let's get into this, Tim. We're finally getting into the first game um, where we have the uh, – where we have the Boston Red Sox and the Cleveland Guardians here. This game, first pitch in 15 minutes, and we will keep an eye on this game throughout the show. Minus 135 for the Red Sox with a total of 9.5 in this game. Let me get up the line history in this spot here, where, wow, this, this line's really moved. Wow, this line's moved. Line opened up at a 140. Uh, it got all the way down to a 125 at one point, and now minus 155 for the Red Sox. So a massive line movement here towards Boston in this one here. Line opened up at a 9.5 minus 105. It got down to a 9. It's back up to a 9.5. And And the line has not moved totals-wise since the opening line. So we've had massive buyback on this over. And we've had a big move towards the the Boston Red Sox. And we have 88 – let me – actually, let me refresh this here because I believe we have uh, more tickets to go over for this one here. Uh, Yeah, wow. 20,270 tickets in, 87% of the tickets, 96% of the cash is on the Red Sox, 50% of the tickets, 88% of the cash is on the Red Sox, run line, and the line moving towards it. 56% of the tickets are on the under, and the line's not moved since the opening line. It went down to a nine, it's back up to a nine and a half. I know a lot of people are going to think under in an 11 a.m. game. I kind of do lean towards the over in this spot here. Uh, Let's take a look at the pitching matchup here. Xavion Curry making his first start of the year. Uh, versus Cutter Crawford. This will be Carter, Craw- uh, Crawford's fourth start, and he's looked phenomenal in all three. Uh, he opened up the season with no one runs, three hits, one walk, seven strikeouts, and six innings pitched against the uh, Seattle Mariners. Then he gave up one earned run on two hits, three walks, four and two thirds, five strikeouts against the Angels. And last be- and last game looked really looked good. Five innings pitched, but no one runs on two hits, four walks, six strikeouts against the Baltimore Orioles. A really good Baltimore Orioles lineup. And he shut them down. I'm on the Red Sox first five at minus 135. That's what I got him at. Now, this this first five is no longer minus 135, which is why I'm glad I bet this this morning before the show. I, I'm coming to the show, Tim, with four baseball plays, which is the most I have all season. Um, and uh, the the first one I bet this morning, other than the, the minus 300 fade, was this Red Sox first five, which was a minus 135 at the time. So um, I'm on the Red Sox first five in this game, minus 135. I got that over on bet M- uh nope, not not nope, wrong wrong thing. I was gonna say bet MGM, but I'm looking at my hockey card. Uh I got it over on bet three six five. Red Sox first five for me. I'm on the Red Sox with you. Uh, I took the run line. Um I got it at plus one twenty five. Um I like Carl C- uh, Cutter Crawford. I think he's gonna have a solid year. He's already off to a solid year. He's only allowed one earned run on eight walks on seven hits with eighteen strikeouts. In 15 and two-thirds innings, um, he has looked solid. And on the opposite side, I don't trust the Guardians. Um, they are off to a good start this year, 10-5 and five start. Uh, but to, uh, Xavion Curry, making his first start of the year, he was more of a bullpen guy last year. Not really anything I trust. Um, so I, I did grab the Boston Red Sox in the early game. I think this they win this one like 4-1, to 4-2, to two, something in that range. So uh, I like the Red Sox in this game. I got the run line. Yeah. Back to the chat. Um, regular season NFL slash college basketball and and uh, playoff is NHL. Regular season playoffs is NHL. Regular season is NF- NFL. He's saying best regular seasons is the NFL and college basketball. Best playoffs is hockey. Best playoffs is hockey. I don't think it's particularly close. Under in the first game, I could see it. Cutter Crawford under strikeouts. I don't know. Hmm. This is a Cleveland team that strikes out a bunch. Uh, Red Sox Nation, uh, let's get wet. Yankee fan here just wagering big on the Red Sox. Line jumps huge. Minus 170 now. Jesus. Jesus. Uh, Cleveland money line, no. You got to be off your meds to take Buffalo against Tampa Bay. LOL. 
or any bottom five team to win today in hockey. Yeah, no chance they win. I'm not betting them. I, I, I did a free pick video on picks and parlays for it. I, I have my reasonings, and we will be going over that game in a few games. But, yes, I do like the Buffalo Sabres at plus 150 today. Mm-hmm. Meant to say, uh, I guess, yeah, no, I understand what you what you meant, Marcos. And, yes, your teams have all won chips. I know, you're a bandwagon. It's fine. Uh, Red Sox first five, balls and scrotum is on some ridiculous streak. Get it? Get it, Dave. Four games in three days for the Cleveland uh, Guardians. Xavier, first start of the year facing seven lefties. Quick turnaround, travel to a start at 11 a.m. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, it, everything screams Red Sox here. And also the beautiful thing is this game starts in 10 minutes. If the Guardians score first, I will live bet the Red Sox money line. Uh, first five money line, yes. I got minus 132 on it, money line. Let's get it. Jose Ramirez hits bombs. Yeah, so does a lot of players in the Red Sox. So, first five, that's really good there. Uh, top three, Nerfy will be on the Angels game, the Miami game, and the Seattle uh, St. Louis game. Thirteen and two on whatever the scrotum, whatever plays. So get it. Uh, tempted to pay the juice on the full game money line. DK has a anytime your team is up by two runs, it cashes better. Oh, Interesting. I will figure out what team I want to use that for. Uh, Cleveland is ranked eighth in strikeouts and was first last year. This team doesn't strike out all much. Oh, nice. Shows how much we pay attention to strikeout props. Uh, I have my worst betting season of all time so far. Need a break. That's that's fair. Let's um. Let's head to hockey, Nick. Yeah, we'll get into it here. Yeah, I get a, uh, I get a, um, what do you call it? DraftKings has a boost winning your money line bet if the team is up two runs, and then I get a forty-two percent boost on a uh, same game parlay. Um, so, oh yeah, because today is Jackie Robinson Day, by the way. So every single player will be wearing number forty-two today. All right, let's get into some playoff implications games, Tim. Um, do it. And this is the fun part of the season when we get to talk about playoffs and how these last few games will dictate them. And this is one of those games that absolutely will. We have the Washington Capitals and the Boston Bruins. We have the Bruins as minus 155, minus 160 road favorites, total of five and a half in this game. Line open up at a 155, it's down to a 153 on bet online. Line open up at a 111, it's down to a 106. For the total, it's moved towards the under, and it's moved towards the um, Capitals in this game here. Uh, we have uh, 60% of the tickets are on the Bruins with the line moving slightly towards the Capitals. Only 2,100 tickets in, so really not much to go off of. 60% of the tickets and 80% of the cash on the over, yet the line's moving towards the under. You guys know how much I care about the markets, though, when it comes to the NHL. It's the only sport I do not care about market movements is the NHL. Um, so... Uh, Let's take a look here. When you look at the playoff implications for this game, it is a huge swing for the Capitals uh, if they win this game in regulation compared to lose this game in regulation. Win this game in regulation if you're the Washington Capitals, your odds to make the playoffs go up to 59%. Your odds if you lose this game in regulation, 10.9. So uh, it is about... A 40, no, yeah, 48% swing today uh, for regulation. Now, if you win this game in OT, it goes up to um, 36.1%. If you lose this game in overtime, your odds still drop and you go down to 18.8% if you're the Capitals. This is a must win game for the Washington Capitals. On the other side, the Bruins, with a win today in regulation or in overtime, would clinch the Atlantic Division. With a win today, the Atlantic Division crown is the Boston Bruins. If they were to lose today, their odds to win the division only go down to 79.5%. So this team is, and if they lose this game in overtime, it's 88.4%. This team is going to win the Atlantic Division. Today is a day they can clinch it, and I wouldn't be surprised if they do. Um, Taking a look at my projections for this game, uh, which Projections are kind of tough at this part time of the year, strictly because motivation and things along those lines. I have this game priced closer uh, towards a pick'em in this game. I see value on the Capitals in this spot. 
just because it's must win does not mean will win. I do think the Capitals are very live in this game. Uh, Charlie Lindgren, and I'm expecting Linus Olmark. Uh, we do not have a confirmed goalie for this game. It is Lindgren confirmed for the Capitals. I'm interested in the Washington Capitals in this game. Um, and uh, I'm going to take a look at what the best available line is for them. Because uh, I can see the – and and this would put pressure on the, the Red Wings to continue winning. Um, and I believe with the win, that would eliminate the Flyers uh, from a playoff uh, playoff spot. Uh, the best available line I could get on the Washington Capitals, um, I do not know because my bet stamp is uh, slowly loading. There we go. Um, best available line I can get on the Washington Capitals is plus 135. I think it's caps or nothing in this game if you're looking at – Betting aside in this game, this game does mean something to Boston, just not as much. It's a home game for the Washington Capitals. I think they're a live underdog in this game. I'm gonna pass for the moment, but it's caps or nothing. Uh, I'm I'm continuing to to not bet um, NHL or NBA until playoffs. Obviously, NBA starts playoffs tomorrow. Um, so until then, um, this is a big game. Uh, but I, I, I can't I'm, – I'm not going to get into any hockey right now. So, um, playoffs, I'll, I'll definitely have some action in the playoffs. But uh, for right now, I'm not betting hockey. It's all you, Nick. Sure. Yep. Uh, nope, not a bandwagon. I'm just a big Chef Curry fan because of the way uh, and how he shoots. I like the Greek freak. And Major Mahomes is a top 10 QB uh Oh, so I arrived with my guys. Um, I would make sense if you were a Davidson fan and watch him go up through college. If you were a Texas Tech fan and watch Mahomes, it just feels like a bandwagon um, when you're jumping on fan bases that are, are winning. Um, so I, I'm not making fun of you, but it it, it is bandwagon. It is a bandwagon. Um, Bruins uh, puck line. Uh, Bruins will spray chunky cream. I would love that. And I, would, I think a loss would eliminate – I need to actually look at this real quick. A loss would, I believe, elim, no, it wouldn't. It would drop them to about 10%. That's right. Uh, a loss in regulation, though, would really damper the Capitals' hopes. And if, like, I believe if the Red Wings win tonight and the Capitals lose, they're done. And the ends today. That is not even close to the team Bruins. I'm staying off the game. At the number, I can only look ball, or only look Washington though. Um, playoff style hockey, Capitals and under. I think the Washington. draw is worth a look. I actually do think the draw is worth a look in this game. Uh, under. Okay. Of course, a veg game anytime goal. Now, Nick, you know numbers don't lie. Yep. Any rookie debuting in the NHL today, they've been hitting their anytime goal if you can find them. Yeah, I, I would have to check. Frothy, warm, vicious cream all over. Okay. Uh, who's in net? Lingren. Lingren for the Capitals. And I, and I don't know for the, the Bruins, and I don't think it matters for the Bruins. They have two of the top five goaltenders when it comes to goals saved above average. So they have the best goalie tandem in hockey. I don't think it matters for the Bruins. Okay. Uh, LL are taking the Mets today. Seems like y'all are not fans anymore. But just because I'm not wearing Mets every day? I don't. I have more than just Mets stuff. And I we, we, we collect. Or I collect hats. I collect stuff like that. Padres finished out an 81-1 to parlay for me last night. So I kind of had to show some respect to the San Diego Padres today. There you go. Uh, Marcus is a definition of a bandwagon. <laughs> We love you, Marcos. Anyways, let's move on to the next game. Yes. And, Tim, if you want to play the clip for your no. last game of the season here, it's no. fine. We have the Tampa Bay Lightning and the Buffalo Sabres, minus 165 for the Lightning. Total six in this game. Line opened up with the Lightning as minus 170 favorites. It's down to a 158. Line opened up with a 6.5 at minus 125. It's down to a 6.5 at minus 109. So we've moved towards the under. We've moved towards the Buffalo Sabres. This one here is 76% of the tickets, 97% of the cash on the under. Explains the line move towards the under. And 74% of the tickets are on the 
Lightning in this game here. I have moved on the Buffalo Sabres at plus 150 in this game. When you look at the playoff implications for this game, there is basically nothing. Um, and the, the the thing with this game is that um, the most anything changes in this game is a half a percent. When you look at odds for either draft lottery or moving up to the – and it's, it's not uh, – here's the thing that – the Lightning are locked into the wild card one spot. They can't move down. They can't move up. They do not care. They get the they get the Maple Leafs their last game of the season, and this is Buffalo's last game of the year. Buffalo, they have nothing to play for, but I look for this young core to do what they did last year, end the note, end the season on a positive note. Um, and I took them plus one fifty in this game. I think Tampa is to be faded in this spot, and. I mean, they have, I would call it the more important game in two days against the Maple Leafs. They're going to get the Boston Bruins in the first round unless Boston loses their next, what, two games and the and the Panthers win their next two games. Um, So the Lightning know what they're going to get. They've been there. They've done that. They know what to do in the playoffs. This game does not matter for the Tampa Bay Lightning. On the flip side, the Buffalo Sabres, this game does not matter to them either. But I see this as a game where they step up and they don't just play out the strings. Because we've seen this team down the stretch play some decent hockey. We saw them after take they the got eliminated. after they got eliminated. They took the Panthers to overtime. They beat a desperate Washington Capitals team 4-2. They kept it close with Dallas. They didn't look great against uh, Detroit. They beat the Flyers, a desperate Flyers team. They beat the uh, they beat the Capitals, a desperate Capitals team, twice down the stretch within ten days. And this is a team that has shown to me they've not given up this year. Like they 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 know the season's over. They haven't given up. They're still giving effort. And this is a good young core that I think can take a step up and make the playoffs next year. I said, yeah, I, yeah. everybody said that this year. So I don't want to hear it. I know. I think next year is the Sabres year to break the, uh, break the drought. And I think they end the season off on a positive note here. And I'm on the Buffalo Sabres at plus plus one fifty. Nope. We've seen this before. Um, the Sabres went, they won a bunch of games after they were eliminated. Yeah. Last year, Oh, bright future, a bright good year. Everybody's like, oh, they're this is the year they break the streak. Well, they're gonna have the. Well, they're gonna. Uh, I think even though they did not make the playoffs this year, it was a failure. Took, it wasn't a failure. It was because failure. We, we had the we had we had the development of Okopaka Lukanen. You got Devin Levi a year in Rochester to develop. Bowen Byram's going to be a star for this team to go with Owen Power and Rasmus Dahlin. They got a good young core. This year was Thompson. a failure. No, I I wouldn't I wouldn't say that with the Buffalo Sabers. You were competitive until th- or you guys were never not eliminated until three games left in the season. So, but they were never competitive. But anyways, uh, I'm not I'm not betting hockey. Um, I don't even know if I watch the game tonight. I I think this is I think this is a game out. I think Buffalo is a really good bet tonight at the number. Oh, God. Over six and a half. Sure. I can see defense optional tonight. And this game doesn't his... matter. So uh, no one's going to care about blocking shots. That which, being said, Rasmus Dahlin's going to block six shots tonight. Which actually, I would actually like to add a play in this game uh, because I have this game projected for six and a half goals. This is a great point. This game does not matter. Now, granted, it's Uka Pekka Lukin and, and Andre Vasilevsky. This total is six on Caesars at even money. I'm gonna pl- I'm gonna play the over in this game as well. I'm gonna take the Sabres in the over in the spot. I'm gonna add that. Uh, over. Okay. Yes, you're making fun of me, but it's all good. Good luck, everyone. Peace. I'm out, and you know damn well my college team, uh, and you know uh, I prefer pros over college. Yeah, he's a green, go green, go white. Uh, especially when they went up against UNC and now. Um, the last anytime goal for Tage Thompson. There you go. Sabres last home game, so they're never 
No, this is on the road. This is in Tampa. Uh, it's not yeah. Nick. Uh, don't get. Yeah, no, we're we're not making the playoffs. Um, prefer. I know what you meant. Uh, Dylan Cousins plus three fifty goal. Sabers always uh, get up the hopes uh, to begin and then crash at the end. No, they no they didn't give us hope throughout the season. They were never in a playoff spot. So, and it's it all started losing. What was the first game? Four to one to the Rangers. Islanders. Nope. Our first loss was to the Rangers. The Islanders the opening night it was against, the Islanders opening night was against the. Uh, because I remember the Sabres opening the night, it was a pick 'em. You were on the Rangers. The Rangers won like four to one or five to one. Five to one. Um, they lost. And that was, yeah, they lost their first two that, games. Because, because we were at the ECU football game, and I was depressed because of it. Yeah, the Rangers were so easy that night. Yeah, but uh, we'll move on to uh, continue with the NHL card for you, Nick. Yeah, this one is an important game. We have the Detroit Red Wings and the uh, Montreal Canadiens. We have the Red Wings. I'm looking at two, minus 210 favorites, total of six and a half in this game. Let's get into the line history here on Bet Online. This line's continuing to climb. Line opened up at a minus 205. It's up to a minus 227. So we've had a 22 cent line movement here, here towards the Detroit Red Wings. What is a Red Wing? I don't know. But I, I, I know Dave's in the chat. I thought he would get a kick out of that. Uh, they're, they're a boot company. I believe he owns a pair. Uh, but uh, this line opened up at a six and a half even money. It's now a six and a half minus 101 uh, in this game. So we got one cent line movement towards the over. We've had a 22 cent line movement towards Detroit in this game with 95% of the tickets on Detroit in this game, 2,625 tickets in. This is the front end of a back to back. They play tomorrow in Montreal. If. The, if the Detroit Red Wings win tonight, I will take the Montreal Canadiens tomorrow. That's my approach for this game. It's Al, I'm expecting Alex Lyon today. I would, would not be surprised if they went to Lyon tomorrow again. It'll probably be Reimer tomorrow. And I don't know the goaltending situation for this game for the Montreal Canadiens. Because it could be Caden Primo. It could be Samuel Montembeau. I do not know. And I would like to know that information for this game. Um, I have the Red Wings favored. I do not have them as minus two ten favorites. And I think this, I think this uh, Montreal Canadiens team could be scrappy, very scrappy. Um, and that was uh, the Montreal Canadiens were a team I liked heading into the season for over their win total, which they did, or over their point total, which they did do that. I think it was over seventy one and a half or seventy two and a half. I believe the team's at seventy four now. Um, so, uh, and this is a. Uh, this is <laughs> on Money Puck. It's described as this is a literal must win game for the Wings. You win in regulation, your odds go up to 51.5%. You lose in regulation, zero, zip, nada, done. You lose in regulation, you're done. You lose in overtime, drops to 31.8%. So it only drops 2% uh, if, if you lose in overtime. So um, that, that's the, if you're the Detroit Red Wings, it is a must that at least you get this game to overtime. You cannot lose in regulation in this game. You must go to overtime in the spot for the Montreal Canadiens. This is a meaningless, meaningless game, but in the Montreal Canadiens, uh, uh, head here, you have two opportunities to eliminate a division rival. You don't think the Montreal Canadiens want to end their season by knocking out the Detroit Red Wings in one of these two games? I think it's more likely that's tomorrow in the Bell Center. I think Detroit gets the win tonight and Montreal gets the win tomorrow. And I'm kind of eerie, I'm kind of curious what a two teamer would be Detroit money line today, Montreal tomorrow type of thing if they're offering uh, this matchup because I don't see the Red Wings winning both these games. But I would, I, I think, and here's the thing, though, is I said the Red Wings are the wild card two team. They have the easiest schedule to do it. It's the way that is. So I'm not betting this game. I'm not betting this game tonight. I'd be interested in Montreal if Detroit wins tonight. I will say, I think there is an interesting approach to it. Bet Montreal both nights. Come into tonight knowing you're betting Montreal both nights. And 
If Montreal wins one of the games, they're profitable. Uh, and on a back-to-back, it's very difficult to beat a team twice in a row. So I would take Montreal uh, money line both games. That's how I would approach it, Nick. Yeah, I, I think that's not a bad look to do that. But I'm I'm not betting hockey, so. Um, I'm not reading that comment because I don't want to jinx it. Goldilocks. Uh, I know who you are. Uh, Anor, uh, where you came from. I only, I only bandwagon three. The three G's. My girl, grandma, and... G- no, no, you're, no, you're a bandwagon because you're from, uh, dude, you're from Michigan and you're a Golden State. Okay, Milwaukee. No, not even Milwaukee. You're Golden State. Milwaukee, uh, Milwaukee I'll give you a pass because that's still in the region. Still regional. And Kansas City. No, those are the two out of the three of those are bandwagons. F it. Uh, Montreal team total over. Sure. That's not a bad look. Yeah. It's okay, Timmy. You have the nut and the O's and the Nuggets. I'm a Mets fan. Um, I will say I, I I am become slowly becoming an Orioles fan, um, like uh, not slowly. I'm an Orioles fan as well. They're my AL team. Uh, I have I have my Orioles jersey sitting over there on the side, um, but I, I do I, I'm running the experiment every day. Every day. But yeah, Nuggets. Uh, I'm excited for that. Uh, I, I still see a Sabres victory. Dear God, over in the Canadians game first period and a draw. First period, that's a good look. Bees minus one and a half. You look the Bruins today. Montreal is very live here. Uh, shout out to Dave Roberts. Um, line is way too wide. Go Habs. Detroit Red Wings have annoyed me since the 90s. I love when they don't get into the playoffs. I think the Red Wings fire the coach uh, if they lose today or next game. I don't think they do because they were never expected to get this high. So, no, I don't see that. Let's keep rolling, Nick. You got. Let's get um, into the next matchup here. Yep, um, and this is another game where Money Puck has this described for one team as a literal must-win game, where if they lose this game in regulation, you're done. It's over. You suck. You're the weakest link. Goodbye. We have the uh, we have the Nashville Predators taking on the Pittsburgh Penguins. We have the Penguins as around a dollar thirty favorites in this game, with a total of six in this one here. Let's take a look at the line history in this spot uh, in this game, where we have. Uh, if this will click, that'd be really cool. Um, which it's it's not at the moment; it's being slow, which is fun uh, for this game. Uh, we have thirty-two percent of the tickets and eighty-eight percent of the cash coming in on Nashville. So the sh- big sharp bets coming in on these Preds. To send Sydney and company packing. 50-50% uh, 50-50 split on the tickets as well. We had this game opening up at $1.25. It got up to $1.34. It's down back down to $1.25 on bet online. So we've had really no line movement there. Line open up at a six at minus 113. It's now a six at minus 114 for this one here. The Penguins need very similar to the Detroit Red Wings at the very least. To get this to overtime. Uh, With a regulation win, their odds go up 18% up to 41.7% chance to make the playoffs. You lose in regulation, you're done. 0%, you're eliminated, over. We could see the elimination of the Penguins and the Red Wings tonight with losses. Um, And... uh, I mean, I wouldn't wouldn't hate it. Um, and it wouldn't be an elimination for the Capitals with the regulation loss tonight, unless I believe um, one of the one of the the, uh, the if if the Red Wings win or something like that, then we'll probably see an elimination for the Capitals, I believe. Um, but yeah, uh, and for this game here, we have I, I had this game projected on a seven. Um, I moved on the over in this game, and I understand the arguments that this could be a playoff style hockey game. Um, and this is a desperate Penguins team. And when you look at the opposite side here for Nashville, this game does mean something to them with a win in this game and regulation or my bad with a point in this game. All they need is one singular point. They can lose in overtime and still get what they want here. 
They are the number one seed, or they, they're the number one wild card, the Nashville Predators, and they will avoid the Dallas Stars in the first round of the playoffs. And they would get the Vancouver Canucks, which is a very good first round matchup for the National Predators, which I think they're very live to win. I think both division winners are on upset alert potentially in the first round, especially if it's Dallas and Vegas. That's a good matchup right there too. Um, and But if they lose this game in regulation, their odds all of a sudden drop to 63.6% to get that wild card one team, a wild card one spot. If you're the Preds, do you really want the Stars in the first round when you can get the Canucks? The answer is no. Um, so big game for the, for the Penguins here as well, obviously, must win. Um, and even though that these two, even though the Penguins have been in must win form uh, as of late, They've been a little bit of an over team as of late. 6-4-6-5-3-2-5-4 in their last three games. So their last three home games have been high-scoring affairs. And I could see that in this one as well. I got the over six at minus 115 in this spot. I see this as a high-scoring game. I could potentially see this as your highest-scoring game of the night uh, for this one. Uh, Nashville and Pittsburgh as your highest-scoring game of the night. Uh, I'm on the over six at minus 115. This is a trap line. Preds or dogs? I think the Penguins win this game. The uh, Tampa Bay Rays minus two and a half in baseball. Good luck. Uh, I love when uh, I could double dip Predators money line and reverse puck line. There you go. Wings puck line. So you're just going. You're just going favorites today. Okay. We're going Preds money line. Get it. Uh, we've got. The f- four more hockey games still. Yeah, and this is another game that has some playoff implications for one team. Jake Allen confirmed for the Devils, and I saw Simeon Barlamov um, expected for the Islanders uh, for this game. Uh, let's get into the uh, line history in this one here between the Islanders and the Devils. It's a pick them here in this spot. Line has moved towards the Isles, though, in this game, we're starting to see now this line move up to 115, 120 on books. Line opened up at a 128 on Bet Online. Uh, immediately went down to a minus 110 within a minute, uh, within two minutes, and now it's come back up to a minus 119. So the, really, the lines moved towards the New York Islanders in this game, and this line opened up at a six at minus 106. It's now a six at minus 101 in this spot here. This is an important game for the Islanders. Um, to avoid a winning get a winning get in game on game 82 at home against the Pittsburgh Penguins, get a freaking point in this game or get to, uh, get a win in this game, get two points in this game with a win. Regulation overtime does not matter. 100%. You're in, win, and you're in if you're the New York Islanders in this game. You lose this game in regulation, your odds go down to 88.3%. You lose this game in overtime, your odds go up to 98.5%. With a win in overtime would require or with a loss in one one point in this game would require either the Capitals or the Red Wings to lose a game of their last two games, which is very possible with the Bruins tonight. This could be a night where if the Islanders lose in overtime but the Bruins beat the Capitals, the Islanders are in the playoffs too. So there are other ways for the Islanders to make the playoffs tonight if they do lose this game. They are in the driver's seat out of this entire playoff race in the Eastern Conference. They are currently three points up on the top wildcard team in the Eastern Conference. Win and you're in. Even if you lose, you still have a really good chance at making the playoffs. But let's not mess around and bring this to a Game 82 where the Pittsburgh Penguins, even if they're eliminated at the, at the time, would love to knock your ass out. Uh, so I am on the Islanders at minus 105 in this game. I got that over on FanDuel. Uh, I'm also I also am riding out this plus 200 uh, for them to make the playoffs. But when it comes to it, I know people are like, oh, just ride out the few. No, I want to double down on this. I really like the Islanders in the spot. My numbers had them around 140 favorites in this game. Uh, so, and with the on the flip side with the Devils, this game means absolutely nothing. And they've already shut down Jack Hughes for the year. Uh, So, and this is their last game of of the season of a very disappointing season where they were a top team for cup futures uh, at the beginning of the season. And now they're not even making the playoffs. So I look for the devils to mail it in here. Give me the Islanders at minus one Oh five. 
There you go. Um, let's go back to the chat. Uh, pass Islanders money line. Uh, I need to bet on them and I um, and see if they can prove they're a good team. Uh, yo yo yo! Hit the like button, like an adult. Let's go Montreal. Um, if it's if if the Islanders can't beat the Devils without Jack Hughes, then they probably don't deserve it. Um, Islanders in the over. Go Pack Go. Uh, missed the baseball slate. No, we no you didn't. Nope. We we didn't we didn't even uh we didn't do baseball yet. Uh, feels like the New York Islanders. Uh, I agree, Nick. Don't just ride the futures. Yeah, well Islanders are rolling seven two and one the last ten. Uh, Lenny's telling me to um to to have a great day. Um, uh, um, go, um he 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 started typing and then because he he what he's trying to type is GFY is go fry yourself a chicken sandwich. So he wants me to get a chicken sandwich. So I got you. Uh, yeah, I like Montreal for whatever reason. Uh, I want the Islanders um, and Capitals uh, to get in, not the other three. Uh, I hope you stub your toe while you go get your chicken sandwich with barbecue sauce. I agree. Um, let's uh, let's head to this one, Nick. Oh crap! What? The Buffalo Sabers are going with Eric Comrie tonight. I'm going to go slam my head on the wall. I'll be right back. I'm just kidding. Uh, we have the New York Rangers and the Ottawa Senators in this game. The Rangers are minus 235 favorites with a total of six and a half in this game. Uh, let's take a look at the line history in this spot. Line open up at a 225. It's up to a 230. Line open up at a six. It's now a six and a half. Uh, by the way, I'm actually okay with the common news because I did play the over, so I'm fine with that. So it is what it is, I guess. Um. And, uh, yeah, line opened up at a six. It's now a six and a half for this game here between Ottawa and New York. 75% of the tickets are on the Rangers in this game on the money line. The line's moved towards them. And the line's uh, 56% of the tickets are on the over, and the line's gone from six to a six and a half. So it makes all, all, all that makes sense there. Taking a look at what this game means to the Ottawa Senators, not a thing. The only thing it'll do is it'll bump up their odds of winning the draft lottery up to 7% with the regulation law uh, with the regulation loss and if they win it'll bump it down to 6.4%. It's the only thing that'll do. Let's get into the implications for the uh Rangers in this game which there are implications for this game. They win in any way shape or form. They are the Metro Division winners. Win in overtime Win in regulation. Congratulations. You're the number one seed, not only in the Metro, you're the number one seed in the playoffs, and you will be facing the Wild Card 2 team, which which is, take your guess, the Red Wings, the Penguins, the Islanders, or the Capitals, or the Flyers. Uh, so take your guess there. You lose this game in any way, shape, or form. You have left the door wide open. The Carolina Hurricanes as minus 285 favorites tomorrow to steal the Metro away from you. You lose this game in regulation, your odds to win the Metro are 25%. You lose this game in overtime, 37.2%. It would drop 51.8% your odds to win the division if you lose this game. This is a big game for the New York Rangers if they want the number one seed and if they want the President's Trophy. And if they want to play a wild card team in the first round, or if they want to play the Islanders in the first round. Because if the Islanders win, they get the Met three seed. And the Rangers, if they lose this game and the Hurricanes win, they will get the Islanders in the first round. So, depends on what the Rangers want to do in this game. It's Jonas Corposalo and it is Igor Shosturkin. I have the Hurricanes at plus 240 to win the division. Uh, so I am a Sens fan in this game here. I would like the Rangers to lose this hockey game. I also bet that hoping that the Rangers would find a way not to get two points against the Islanders and the Islanders would be in the playoffs already. Um, and I had this game priced at around minus 185, minus 190 for the New York Rangers. 
Um, so I see value here with the Ottawa Senators. I lean sends in this game. That is no play for me. We're mid two in uh, Boston, by the way. A little update. Um, mid two zero zero in Boston. I'm on no nothing in this game here, though. Sounds good. Uh, someone say chicken sandwich. Yes. Ooh, chicken sandwich. Uh, the Capitals would be doubtful, hilarious because of their awful goal differential. Uh, has ever been anything like that to make the playoffs? If the no. Capitals win, if the Capitals make the playoffs, they're winning a maximum of one game in the playoffs. There you go. Sens are live. They absolutely are, and this is a, this could be a scrappy. This, this could be a little bit of a trap game for the New York Rangers because the Rangers have something to play for. The uh, the uh, the Senators do not. The Senators have won three of their last four games as well, and they've done it against Washington, Tampa Bay, and uh, Montreal. They went to shootouts and overtime in those three wins. Rangers have lost two of their last three games, so we'll see. Uh, I'm on the Rangers puck line. Good luck, Lenny. Uh, Kachuk, anytime goal. Rangers minus one and a half probably over. Zibanejev goal. Uh, Sends are a solid bet. All right, Nick, we got two more hockey games and then baseball. Yep. The LA Kings and the Minnesota Wild, this game has, I think, no implications on it. I think this is one of the only games with no implications. Uh, Let's get into it, though. Here we have the LA Kings around minus 160, 170 favorites in this game. I'm seeing 162 on bet online. It opened up at a 164. It's down to a 162. Line open up at a five and a half minus one twenty. It's still five and a half and minus one twenty. So no movement, no line movement on the side. Two cent line movement towards the Minnesota Wild uh, on the or, or no movement on the total. Two cent line movement towards the Wild in this game here. This is a completely meaningless game for the Minnesota Wild, and they are probably in the worst spot in all of hockey at the moment. They have a zero percent chance of making the playoffs. They have a zero percent chance of winning the draft lottery. Oh, nice. Perfect. They are they are in probably the worst spot uh, that you could have finished if you're the Minnesota Wild this year. No Celebrini, no playoffs. Um, and the LA Kings are in the playoffs already. What will this determine? And with a win, they are around 91% to get the third seed in the Pacific Division and match up against Edmonton in the first round. With a loss... In regulation, all of a sudden, there is a 67% chance that they get the wild card two seed, the wild card two, and Vegas gets the three seed in the Pacific and gets to go up against Edmonton in the first round. Now, the question is, who would you rather face, the Edmonton Oilers or the Vancouver Canucks? Vancouver. Um, yeah, you'd rather face Vancouver. So maybe, maybe the Kings want to lose this game. They lose this game, they're they're a really good chance they'll be in the wild card spot. They don't mind road games. This has been a team, a Kings team that's been good on the road all year. And they would get the Vancouver Canucks in the first round, who they match up well against, rather than the Edmonton Oilers, who have eliminated them in the first round back to back years. If I'm the Kings, I want to lose this game. I want to do everything in my power to avoid the Edmonton Oilers in the first round. And after the Oilers. Lost to the Canucks. The Canucks have basically won the division. Good for them. I think this is a wild. I, I think this is wild money line. That's that's what this is telling me right now. This is wild money line for the I mean, wild. They, you're not getting me to bet the wild money line, so. Uh, and I would like to take. Uh, I would like to take a, a little bit deeper of a dive into this game. Minnesota uh, does get Seattle. After this, on the 18th in the last game of their season, for the LA Kings, they get the Blackhawks to end the season on the 18th as well. So both these teams still have a game left. This is wild money line for me. I'm going to move on this too. I'm gonna, uh, this is this is Minnesota for me. Um, I'm not going to put it up on the site, but I'm, I am going to bet the Wild today. Um, back to plus, the chat. plus 140 on bet 365. Let's try to rapid fire the chat ready. Uh, sprinkle on the underdogs tonight. Good luck. Um, yeah. Felt like the Sens lost every game that actually mattered this season. Check my head. Super disappointing. They have 
such a deep defense. Uh, we'll take chicken off their hands. Yeah. Are you guys doing NBA today? No. There is no, no NBA today. There's no NBA today. Uh, big slate to say today. No, M there is no NBA today. Not wild. Um, wild money line. At some point, you get tired of getting the shit kicked out of you. No. Uh, least favorite dog. Wild. Um, Kings in the over. But okay. but like if you're if you're if you're speaking psychologically for these teams, Minnesota or uh, if you're LA, you're inviting losing this game and getting the wild card spot. You're inviting it. I would rather the Canucks rather than the Oilers. Yeah. King me. Uh, I think the Kings would want the Oilers third time would be the charm for them to eliminate. No, them. I do not want the Oilers if I'm the Kings. And playoffs need to start already. They absolutely do. Yeah. No. Uh, what do the playoffs start? Saturday. April the 20th. Yep. There you go. I almost want to wait like tomorrow for the playoffs. Yep. Um, I'll meet y'all out in Vegas for the WSOP main event July 3rd. See you guys there. Man, I wish I could. One day, one day I'll sit down at the $10,000 main event in Vegas and I'll play. Um, for now, I don't have that type of money. Okay, just making sure you guys were awake today. Yes, Fernando, we're awake today. Thank you. Fernando. He, he's messing with us because one day there was no NBA and we started capping it and we didn't realize it was for the next day. Uh, I'll be waiting. Now the Canucks own the Kings. Oilers going to, the, uh, going to weather the conference finals. Western Conference Finals, yeah. Kings don't care who they play. I don't know if that's necessarily true, but Nick, final game of the card. Wow, yeah. And we get the uh, the Edmonton Oilers and the San Jose Sharks in this game. Um, I mean, you, we could start with our lock of the day, Edmonton Oilers money line minus, from, minus 480, right? There's no way they lose, right? I'm, I'm, I'm obviously being facetious here, but – uh, on bet online, we're seeing minus 415 was the opening line. It's 416. It's a massive difference with huge lines from from bet online to uh, from bet online to Bovada. I type in Bovada odds because it's it's simpler for me. Um, if there's certain books you want me to type in the odds for, just let me know. I just use Bovada. I know the odds are crazy high sometimes, but it is what it is. Uh, and then the total opened up at a six at minus 108. It's now a six at minus 112. So we've been moved towards the over. And a move towards the uh, Oilers in this game. No cash flow whatsoever in this game. This is a pretty simple um, no thank you for me. Um, this game means nothing for the Sharks. They've already locked themselves into 25% chance, a 25.5% chance of getting Celebrini, which is going to be crazy when the Blackhawks win the draft lottery again this year. Um, and then for the Oilers, after that loss, um, after that loss against Vancouver, their their divisional odds are down to two point two percent if they win in regulation today. If they lose, they get the number two seed in the division, and it's done. Vancouver is going to win the Pacific. They're going to get the number one seed in the in the division, and they are going to play the wild card two team, which could be um, Vegas, could be LA. Um, I don't know how much they the, the Oilers try in this game. McDavid's probably not playing um, in this spot in this game. I mean, there's no reason to play McDavid. Um, if anything, Sharks plus two and a half, which is minus 130 on bet, uh, bet MGM. If I had to bet anything in this game, but there's no reason to bet this game whatsoever. Cool. Uh, grab the over Hyman goal Bouchard point. Only the Sharks think to play uh, that is uh, Bane to my teams and bets at home anytime goal slash so point. I hate hockey since Coyotes are moving. They're, they're moving for the better, though. Hey, baseball time. Yeah, let's get into it here. We have the Baltimore Orioles and the um, Minnesota Twins. We have the Twin or the Orioles as minus 160 favorites in this game with a total of nine in the spot. Let me switch over from um, let me switch over from hockey to baseball. 
and we will get into some baseball here. Uh, now, uh, as quick quick update when uh, when we have all of my numbers loading, um, we're through two innings, 0-0 in Boston. That first five under should have been bet too. I should have done first five under and Boston first five. Um, but it is what it is. I didn't not I mean to click the Boston game. We're going over Minnesota and Baltimore, which this line is plummeted. This line opened up at a minus 150 for Baltimore. And now on Bet Online, it's minus 124. I would like to know why this line has plummeted the way it has. Line opened up at a nine at minus 120. It's now a nine at minus 110. So we have a move towards the under, and we have a move towards the Twins, a massive move towards the Twins here in this game where you could have waited on Baltimore and gotten a much better price. And the thing is, 86% of the, or 78% of the tickets are on the Orioles, but 51% of the cash is on the Twins. So the Twins are taking ultra-sharp money in this game. The question is, have you missed your line on the Twins? Because you could have gotten them this morning around the plus 145 range, and now you would have to settle for around plus 115, plus 120. And that's ultimately, I think, what's going to keep me off this game. This game screams. The Twins are live. Um, let's take a look at the pitching matchup here in this one. And then I will throw it over to Tim where he will say bet the Orioles every day, no matter everything, no matter anything. Um, it's Louis Varlin and, and Cole Irving. Cole Irving is somebody I would like to fade. Uh, Louis, Var- <coughs> Sorry. Louis Varlin has not looked particularly great, but he's faced two 10-win teams so far. Um, gave up three earned runs on six hits, two walks, four strikeouts, and four innings pitched against the Brewers in the in Milwaukee. Then at home last game, he gave up six earned runs on seven hits, three walks, six strikeouts, and five innings pitched against the LA Dodgers. On the other side, Cole Irving, um, it's not looked good in either of his games. Four and run on seven hits, two walks, three strikeouts, and five innings pitched against the Royals, and then five and run, seven hits, three walks, four strikeouts, and five innings pitched against the Red Sox, two teams that have actually been pretty decent this year. Um, I have no interest in this game. It'd be twins or nothing with the way the line's moving, but I think you've missed your line if you like the Minnesota Twins today. Uh, so uh, I can only look twins, but not the, not the price. Uh, I put it in the chat. Um for, for Orioles every day. Um, it is what it is. I know Nick makes fun of me for it and whatever, whatever it may be. Um, I, I've been riding it every day like you've been fading the Dodgers every day. Um, it's it's my system that I've been doing, and it's it's been profitable both on money line and run line so far this year. Um, so this is just a um, – this is just a kind of a go-to play. I'm going right back to the Orioles. Um, I hate. Uh, uh, I'm on the over in the um, in the Sharks game. Good luck. Uh, everything should move out of Arizona. No, the the Diamondbacks can stay. Um, how did Mike Glavin not know the Yotes were moving? I know, right? It was hasn't it been kind of obvious? Uh, Evander Kane plus two hundred goal against the Benajad. Um, or Zamanajed goal plus 179, two guys um, again, uh, their old team. Two guys playing their old team. Zamanajed was on uh, the Senators? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. A while ago. Uh, I was just rethinking about it now because uh, stuff is coming out. Under nine. Okay. Over. Twins money line. Here's my. Um, stats for all the O's games. Crazy how long the show has been uh, with two sports to go over. Um, yeah. Uh, hitting is the most important thing in baseball. I don't care about the bullpen. Um, if you give a pitcher run support, it makes his job so much easier. Yes. Chat is active. It is today. Chat is very active today. Huge shout matter. out to the chat today. Uh, O's money line. There you go. Definitely going, doing both ESB baseball systems as a DMV parlay. Well, fading the Dodgers and betting the Orioles. <laughs> Let's head to this game, which I not uh, only fading the Dodgers, it's a double whammy today. So Sunday night baseball. Yeah, it's not only just fading the although Dodgers. The, although, no. oh, there's a minus three hundred. 
But no, no, there's no, a third no, no. system that so Sunday night baseball is only a fade when they're traveling. Okay, fine. And there's traveling. two and a half systems on this. It, they did play Sunday night baseball last night, but also take a look at the money line for the LA Dodgers today. Yeah, I see. It's like almost 400. Yeah, the minus 300 fade as well. Uh, so there are two and a half systems backing the um, the Washington Nationals today. So we'll get into that. Uh, but um, we'll head into the next matchup here with the Colorado Rockies in Philadelphia. Take on the Phillies. Minus 270 for them fighting Phils with a total of eight and a half in this game. Let's take a look at the line history in this one here where we have – uh, line open up at a 240. It's up to a 255 for the Philadelphia Phillies. Line open up at an 8.5 minus 115. It's now an 8.5 and, and minus 125. So we've had a move towards the over. We've had a move towards the fight and fills. 97% of the tickets are on the Phillies. We have nothing for the total in this game here. Uh, and when we take a look at the pitching matchup here, Cal Quantrill and Aaron Nola, your pitching matchup here. Uh Quantrill's third start. This will be his third road start or fourth start of the year, third road start of the year. Uh, he gave up five earned runs on nine hits, one walk, one strikeout, and five innings pitch against the Diamondbacks. Four and runs on four hits, four walks, three strikeouts, and four innings pitch against the Cubbies. Both those were on the road. Then he came back to Coors Field and had his, be- his best start of the year, which wasn't great. Still three earned runs on eight hits, no walks, six strikeouts, and six innings pitched. But still, it was his best outing of the year. It was at home against a um, – against a um, Diamondbacks team he's already seen. Um, and then on the flip side here, we have uh, Aaron Nola, who is coming in off of an okay start, six innings, two earned runs, three hits, three walks, three strikeouts, and six innings pitched. He shut down the Nationals, no earned runs, two hits, four walks, four strikeouts, and five and two-thirds. He got beat up against the Braves in his first start of the year, six earned runs, 11 hits, one walk, three strikeouts, and four and a third. It's very easy to get beat up by the Braves, though. Uh, that is one of the best lineups in baseball, so I understand. I have no interest in this game. Uh, the minus 270 it makes that very easy to pass. And uh, the, with the market moving, and we have no, I really don't have too much info to go off of for the total in this one. This one's a pass for me. I have no interest in the minus 270 Phillies, though. No, I don't either. Um, and this is not a Colorado team that you're going to want to back on the road. Uh, they're already 2-8 and eight in the road this year. Uh, now they're 2-4. and four at home so they're not gonna be a good team regardless um it would be it would be colorado or nothing um i'm not laying the price on the phillies i'm not laying a run line on the phillies uh just not a spot that i would be interested there um no you don't have to bet it you don't have to bet all all the games this is one that i stayed off of fair natties Uh, okay Dodgers money line got it. No, well, I'm not. I'm not betting that game. Uh, LL forgot about the two other minus 300 than the Sunday night baseball fade. There you go. Feels like a four free Phillies win, which is exactly why I wouldn't want to win. Philly minus one half parlay. They're going to win like ten to one. I don't know. Uh, Nationals will be profitable this month. I can see that. Yerfi, uh, Nola. I uh, retract. You're probably eight to one or nine to one. All right. Bulls to make playoffs. Nope. How stupid is it that the Bulls and the Hawks yeah. could be in the playoffs this year? Uh, they're neither of them are going to be. Um, could be. But, yeah, they could be. But neither of them are going to be. Let's uh, keep going to this one, Nick. Yeah. Way to work out of a gym, by the way. We're heading into the bottom of the third. Still 0-0. Zero, zero. They worked big time out of a jam. There was a leadoff, or no, it was a one-out triple for the Guardians, and uh, they, they uh, the Red Sox get out of there without giving up a run. So very nice to see there. Boston first five still alive. We're good. Um, we had the San Francisco Giants and the Miami Marlins. This was the first one I moved on uh, today. Uh, this line has moved a little bit. Line opened up at 115. It's down to a 108, though, but I do have an explanation why that is. So I have no fear in this line movement. Line open up at an 8.5 and, and minus 105. It's an 8.5 and, and minus 115. So move towards the over, and they move towards the Marlins in this game. But the main reason why this line's moved towards the Marlins is A.J. Puck was scratched from the start. It'll be Edward Cabrera uh, making his uh, season debut against the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, 49ers. Giants. 
San Francisco Giants. Uh, it's Kyle Harrison on the other side, which Kyle Harrison has looked okay this year. Nothing spectacular. He's a guy that will give you five, six innings of three-run baseball. Gave up three and runs and five hits, no walks, eight strikeouts, and six innings pitched in his last start against the Washington Nationals, which was his first home start. The previous two were both road starts in California, where in L.A., he gave out uh, he gave up four and runs on six hits, three walks in five innings pitched, four strikeouts. And in San Diego, gave up two and runs on six hits, no walks, five strikeouts, and six innings pitched. Uh, this will be the first start for Edward Cabrera, and I've already bet against him here. Uh, it is a continuation of fading the Marlins. I am on the San Francisco Giants. I got it at minus 118 on FanDuel. So let's see. Uh, we've bet against the Marlins – and 16 out of their 16 games. And we've cashed fade in the Marlins in 12 of those games. Because one game, um, the Yankees won but didn't cover the run run. Um, so, fade in the Marlins has been 12 and, uh, 12 and 4 for us so far this year. I'll take 750 win percentage all day. Um, and let's keep on doing it. Um, San Francisco Giants on the money line. And I am expecting the over. Um, I'm expecting some runs on uh, the side of San Fran. I expect them to put up a bunch. Um, and I will say San Fran uh, is coming off of a series in Tampa Bay. So it's not like they had to travel. So that's at least good. Um, and it's a bad Marlins team. So uh, let's go ahead and jump on the over and San Fran in this one. Nick. I like it. And by the way, I know somebody mentioned it earlier. Um, if there's any players making their NHL debut to take a goal scorer prop there. Um, for for Montreal, Lane Hudson will be making his NHL uh, NHL debut. He was Montreal's 2022 second round pick, 62 overall. So there you go. There's If you're looking for a long shot, there you go. Marlins first five, Giants money line, live bet. Miami. Miami nerfy as usual. That's fine. Welcome to Miami. Give me the fish. Uh, I will give you a rotten fish because that's what yes. they are at this point. Uh, let's go to this game, Nick, which should be an interesting matchup. Yeah, we have uh, the Texas Rangers coming in off of a, a big series against the Astros. Now they head to Detroit to take on the Tigers. Uh, let's take a look at the line history in this one here where we have Michael Lorenzen. Revenge game. Revenge game against Reese Olsen, your pitching matchup here. Line opened up. With the Rangers as minus 120 favorites, now we're seeing the Tigers as minus 116 favorites here on Bet Online. So we've had a flip of the line here, a massive move towards these Detroit Tigers, Motor City Kitties. Uh, the line opened up at a nine at even money. It's down to an eight and a half at minus 116. So we've had a move towards the under, and we've had a dog to favorites for these uh, Detroit Tigers. 70% of the tickets and 60% of the cast is on the Texas Rangers in this game with the line moving towards the Tigers with only 30% of the tickets and 40% of the cash. This game streams Tigers uh, right off the rip. Just the market showing no fear towards this Texas Ranger money line or Texas Ranger money. This is Michael Lorenzen's first start of the year. Uh, he did play the second half of the season with the Tigers last year. He was traded from the Phillies to the Tigers in uh, halfway through the se season, he made 18 appearances with the Detroit Tigers. All of them starts where he went five and seven with a 3.58 ERA. He looked decent at 105 and two thirds innings pitched. Um, and on the flip side here, we have Reese Olsen, who is making his third start. Uh, he started off the year with a very solid start, giving up no one runs on three hits, two walks, three strikeouts, and five and two thirds against the New York Mets. Uh, and then he followed that up with a poor start, six earned runs on nine hits, three walks, three strikeouts, and four and a third against the Pirates. Uh, I look for him to bounce back in this game, Reese Olsen. Um, and the market is screaming that Reese Olsen bounces back in this game. Um, and I will be moving on the Detroit Tigers. I want to look at one more thing before I, I decide whether it's um, – its first five or full game uh, is the, the bullpen situation here. Rangers, 28th-ranked bullpen in baseball. That'll make it pretty simple here. I think I kind of want to double down on them, too. I really like the Tigers in this spot. Um, I'm going to take the full game. I'm going to take the full game money line for the Tigers. I'm going to not double up on this spot. 
but I'm going to take the Motor City Kitties here, at, at, uh, at, and I'm going to shop around for the best number. Well, I got a good number. How about the run line at plus 180? Um, I want to take a big shot with the Tigers. The the uh, Texas Rangers are coming off of a big series against the Astros, and whenever a team faces a big rival, an in-state rival, I look to fade them the next game. Um, and this is a Detroit Tigers team that – What are they coming off of? Uh, Twins. All right, so that's a division rival. But um, but they did not really look all that good in that series. Uh, I like the the Tigers big in this game. Um, I like Reese Olsen. Lorenzen's kind of been up and down. Um, I'm going to – I know it's – I could get a a cheap price on their money line. Let's take a shot. Uh, and the only reason why I'm okay with taking a shot, Nick, is because we're doing so well on the site to start off the year. I feel like we can have a little bit of a luxury to go after it. Detroit Tigers on the run line, plus 180. I'm kind of interested, and I don't do this. I kind of want to see what this is real quick. It would be plus 135, Tigers minus one. I'm just going to stick with the minus 115 because I – I don't like taking – I don't take that type of – those type of risks when I can get a better number on a money line because I get it. It's baked into the line. And, may, and maybe the way to do this is just – I mean, I, I just bet Tigers money line minus 115. I like I like this Tigers money line today. Um, I did wrong and, and maybe the way to get a bigger score on this game is taking the first five in full game, which – I think I'm going to land on that. I think I'm going to land on fading Lorenz in here against his former team. He only played half a season with it, so don't play too much into that. I know. I was joking with that. I was joking. I Yeah. I'm going to double down on the Tigers here. I'm talking myself into a double down spot here. Fanatics is giving me minus 125 in the first five. Um, I'm going to move on the Tigers. First five, minus 125, full game, minus 115 um, in this spot. I, I took the run line. Um, and plus 180 is up on the site. Okay. Let's take a shot. Let's do it. Um, Rangers money line. Detroit Tigers. Yeah, this will be the Detroit team that wins today. Uh, Lenny, where you at? Go, Pack, go. Pass. Rangers can hit this pitcher. Bucks will beat the Bulls, will beat the Hawks. And whoever loses that, whoever wins that, is going to get blown out by Miami. So it doesn't matter. I'm going over O's team total, four and a half in the over. Yes. Where's Kershaw been injured? I can't trust Pi- uh, Tigers full game. That's fine. Yes, plus 180. Yes, big money line, big run line, plus 180. Let's ride. Nick, let's go to the next game. Yeah, uh, we have the uh, the uh, Tampa Bay Rays and the LA Angels um, uh, for this matchup. Minus 165 for the Rays, total of eight in this spot. Uh, let me track that real quick, the Tigers first five. There we go. Um Oh, a big favor or decent sized favorites are these Tampa Bay Rays. But let's get into it. Zach Eflin and Pablo Sandoval is your pitching matchup here. I'm open up at a 150. It's up to a 160 now for the Rays. So we do have a move towards Tampa in this spot. I'm open up in an eight and a half at even money. It's an eight and a half. At, it's now down to an eight at minus 117. We have a move towards the under and we have a move towards Tampa Bay in this game here. Where you have 97% of the tickets are on Tampa Bay. No cash flow, uh, nothing, no cash flow on the to- on the side. And then no tickets, no cash on the total in this game here. We have Zach Eflin and Patrick Sandoval. Sandoval this year feels like he has potential. Sandoval. He just – I just don't know what it is with him. Um, And he just faced this Tampa Bay team. Gave up four and runs on six hits, three walks, six strikeouts, and five innings pitch. Previous that, he faced Miami where he gave up two earned runs on four hits, two walks, seven strikeouts, and five and, a, and five and two-thirds. He gets lit up in his first start against the Baltimore Orioles, three earned runs on six hits, five runs, but only three of them earned, two walks, two strikeouts, and one and two-thirds innings pitched. Um, on the other side, Zach Eflin is somebody I have noticed has home road splits. Um, he did and, I mean, o- overall, he's not looked good this year. He's had one good start. It was against the Texas Rangers. He just faced this LA Angels team, gave up five earned runs on nine hits, no walks, 
five strikeouts and five innings pitch. Maybe this is a bounce back spot for, for Eflin. And that's what the market's telling me with the line moving towards the under and the line moving towards Tampa is that Eflin bounces back in this game. He gave up uh, one earned run on five hits, one walk against and five strikeouts and six and a third against the Rangers. He started off the season poorly at home, giving up six earned runs on six hits, one walk, five strikeouts and five and two thirds against the, on the, against the Jays. The, my, the market and logic points towards Eflin bounces back in this game and pitches well against the Angels team that just saw him. But you kind of flip the script. If he struggled the first game, maybe he steps up and pitches well the second game. This Rays bullpen has been terrible this year. And so is the Angels. Um, it'd be Rays minus one or nothing for me. Uh, but I'm, I'm not going to be betting this game. Uh, no, like my boy Zach F. When I had Cy Young tickets on him last year, I know he got injured on all that stuff, but I am high on him. Um, and he's normally a lot better at home. Um, obviously, he got blown up two out of his three starts so far. Um, so until he gets himself uh, together, it's going to be difficult to want to back him. It'd be kind of look towards an under in this game because I do think Sandoval could have a good game as well. And I'm not a big fan of either of these two offenses. Uh, that being said, it's a uh, stay away spot for me, Nick. Fair. Uh, raise, raise, over, over. Tim's boy, Eflin Nerfy again. Raise. Uh, can you look at the? Uh, uh, can you look at the raise? I can only look at the raise, but I don't know. I only know soccer. That's fair. Uh, not a big fan of pass. There you go. Speaking of games I'm not a big fan of. Toronto Blue Jays are taking on the New York Yankees. Blue Jays minus 115 favorites, total of 8.5 in this game. Uh, let's take a look at um, the pitching or the uh, line history in this one here, where it opened up with Toronto as minus 109 favorites. It's now minus 106. So we've had a move towards the Yankees in this game here from 101 to 104. Line opened up in an 8.5 minus 120. It's now down to an 8.5 minus 117. So we've had a move towards the under. We've had a move towards the um, Yankees in this game here. We have 35% of the tickets and 60% of the cash is on the Blue Jays, though. The line moving towards the Yankees. Um, and then 60% of the tickets and 89% of the cash on the over with this line moving towards the under. Um, this is a tricky market. Uh, with this game because the, the bigger bets are coming in on the Blue Jays, but the line's not moving. Luis Gill uh, for the Yankees, this is his third start. He's looked good in the first two. He's not made it through five innings yet, though. Two earned runs on two hits, four walks, and four and a third, eight strikeouts in his last game against these Blue Jays. So he looked good against the Blue Jays last game. One earned run, one hit, three, strike, uh, three walks, and six strikeouts, and four and two-thirds against the Diamondbacks. So he looked good against the Diamondbacks, too. Chris Bassett on the other side. Um, this is his fourth start. He finally had a good one in his last one. Gave up one run on five hits, four walks, eight strikeouts, and six and two thirds against the Mariners. Uh, previous to that, four and runs and nine hits, three walks, three strikeouts, and four and a third against the Astros in a loss. And then four and runs, six hits, two walks, six strikeouts, and five innings against the Rays in a loss. Uh, last game was his first home start, and he looked good. Does Chris Bassett pitch well here at home? as well maybe another game i really don't have too much interest in i just don't um and it's going to be i think just another pass for me it'd be yankees or nothing i think when you look at this game but i think bass could pitch well in the spot and when you look at uh let me take a look at this total one last time um because this could be an under uh with the line moving towards the under a couple cents nothing crazy and 55% of the tickets, 84% of the cash on the over. And the line moving towards the under. This is a dome in Toronto. Toronto's been a little bit of more of an under team. I want to take a look at this under a little bit. Um, and I'll shop around and see what type of number I can get for it. I'm going to stick to my guns. Um, I don't, I, I'm not betting Blue Jay games. Um, they did not serve me well last year. I'm not going to try to jump on them now. So uh, good luck to you. But, uh, I'm, I'm staying away from Blue Jeans. Smiles. Uh, 
uh, Lean Blue Jays, Jays, Jays. The Red Wings just called up Billy Huso. And over. There you go. And let's go to the other New York team, Nick. Yeah, the New York Mets and the Pittsburgh Pirates in this game here. Um, Mets minus 130 favorites, total of eight in this game. Mets now have won three straight series. Yep. They beat the Braves. They beat uh, the the Reds, the Braves, and the Royals. The Royals coming into that series playing really good baseball, and, and the Mets two out of the three games shut them down offensively. It's going to be Adrian Hauser and uh, Mike uh, Michael Perez or Martin Perez, my bad. With the line opening up, the Mets minus one twenty five. It got down to a minus one eleven, and now it's back up to a one nineteen. So we've had a six cent line movement here towards the Pittsburgh Pirates. Line opened up at a minus one oh five. It's now a minus one fifteen. So we've had a move towards the over, and we've had a move towards the Pirates. Uh, we have seventy eight percent of the tickets, ninety eight percent of the cash coming in on the over. Ten thousand seven hundred twenty eight tickets in, with the line moving towards it. Fifty five percent of the tickets, ninety one percent cash coming on the Mets. We got the lines moving towards the Pirates. Is is interesting um, in this game here. Uh, Mike uh, Martin Perez has looked good uh, in his first three starts. Um, eight innings in his last start. Uh, gave up one earned run on six hits, no walks, seven strikeouts in eight innings um, against the Tigers. And unfortunately for Martin Perez, they lost that game 5-3 because the bullpen uh, choked that game away. Two earned runs on six hits, two walks, six strikeouts, and six and two-thirds against the Nationals. And one earned run, six hits, three strikeouts, uh, three walks, two strikeouts, and four and a third against the Marlins. He's looked good in his starts. Adrian Hauser on the other side uh, had a good start against the Detroit Tigers and got hit a little bit against the Atlanta Braves. One earned run, three hits, three walks, three strikeouts, and five innings against the Tigers. And then five earned runs on eight hits, two walks, and one strikeout in five innings against the Braves. Uh, Adrian Hauser is what he is. He's an average pitcher which is a good middle uh, middle rotation arm to have, like a, a four or five type of starter. And Martin Perez is the left-handed version of that. Um, the market's saying Perez pitches well in this game. Uh, actually, the line moving towards the over suggests there might be some offense in this game, but they expect the Pirates to put up runs against Hauser. The wind blowing in at eight miles an hour, so nothing crazy there. Um it, I hate this passing on a bunch of games, but I don't really have too much of an interest in this one. Um, I feel like the Mets can be worth a look, but the markets are, are kind of saying no to that. So it's a pass for me on this game, on this spot. I kind of lean over the total, though. I will say Adrian Hauser has decent numbers against Pittsburgh in his career from his Milwaukee days, and he's faced them a bunch. Um over the last two years, he's faced them three times, um, and he's got he's um, one he's got one win, two no decisions. Um, I think he pitches well today. I could look towards like an maybe an under more in this game rather than anything. Um, is it something I necessarily need to get involved in? No. Um, should be should be a good game. Uh, it would be a lean towards the Mets in this one. I see the line moving. Um, a little bit towards them. So I would lean towards the Mets, but it would have to be Mets run line or nothing because I don't really like my minus 130. So that's just me, though. Uh, Nick, that Canadian player was making a uh, – what? Uh, that was a Canadian player that's making their debut. Yes. Luke Hudson. Mets. Sure. Pirates. No. Can't back the Mets at home. Why? Yeah, Why not? They, so they, Why they, not? Start, they started off 0-5 at home. Since then, they're three and one at home. They had a really bad start to the season, and uh, and and they they're bouncing back. Play, play the Pirates theme song. No. <laughs> Not today. Let's keep going to this game, Nick. I will say this baseball card is kind of rough, and the next couple of days is going to be rough. Yeah, I mean, I, the only the only things I've bet so far was the, the Red Sox first five here. And then I have Giants and a double up on the Tigers and a double up on the Nationals. And that's it at the moment. Uh, let's get into this one here, though. We have the Kansas City Royals and the Chicago White Sox. The Royals minus 185 favorites, total eight and a half in this game. We have Nick Nash, uh, Nastrini pitching for the White Sox. Seth Lugo 
for the Royals. Line opened up at a 170. It's down to a 158. It did get up to a 179 at one point. Line opened up at a 9 at minus 115. It's now down to an 8. So we've had a full move down with 86% of the tickets are on the over, which tells me that this game could be an under. Um, Only 8,500 tickets in. And there's also a pitching change. Uh, I don't remember who it was supposed to be, but uh, Nastrinini is a pitching change because – in the one, the one side I, I, I look at live uh, live odds, um, the 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 name is a different color, and uh, that that indicates a pitching change. So it wasn't supposed to be uh, Nastrinini uh, in this matchup here. Taking a look at the, the uh, pitchers here, Seth Lugo has been one of the reasons why the Royals have been off to a good start this year. Uh, he's pitched really well so far to start the year. No earned runs on two hits, one walk, and six innings pitched against the Twins. He gave up one earned run on eight hits, two walks, and three strikeouts in six and two thirds against this White Sox team. And he went. To, uh, he gave up two earned runs on seven hits, two walks, two strikeouts, and six innings pitched against his Astros team. So he's pitched pretty well. He's not a strikeout guy, uh, but he's pitched well so far this year. Uh, and Nastrini, I believe this is his first – appearance this is his major league debut um i'll go look him up he he was picked 131st overall in the fourth round of the 2021 draft by the la dodgers uh i do not have any minor league stats i would like to know some of his minor league numbers because i kind of want to fade him and i would kind of want to fade him with the, the royals here in this spot uh the markets are making it that difficult to do, but I can only look Royals in this game. Uh, minor stats? I got some minor league stats. Um, so far in 2024, he'd started in two games. He's only gone seven innings, six hundred runs. Um, last year, he played for three different minor league teams, uh, two in AA, uh, one in AAA, um, and he was uh, not – he was, okay, 114 innings pitched, uh, 52 earned runs for 4.08 ERA, um, 54 walks, 139 strike. So over a strikeout in uh, an inning. So at least that's good, but that's keep in mind that's in the minor leagues. Um, I don't necessarily – yeah, this will be his first time pitching in the majors. Um, I want to check out – because, yeah, he was – um, let's see. Did he go to college? He was, uh, signed, uh, he was assigned to the U S UCLA Bruins. Um, whether or not he actually played for them, he did. He, he played for them for a couple of years. He ended up going to the draft in his junior year. Um, I, 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 I'm not going to go after this game just because uh, I don't really like the AL um, Central versus AL Central matchups. They, um, I, I try to play to my strengths, and they are not my strength. So uh, this one ends up being a stay away as well. I will. I do have plays. Um, I'm, I'm here to make money. I'm not here to just randomly bet games. Yep. And I, and I, and, and passing is okay. I'm up 15 units in baseball this year for a reason. I don't bet every game. Yeah. Uh, back to the chat, Nick. I'm starting to type up uh, the member-only stuff. Jeez. Uh, where do you leave off? Because on mine, um, when I'm about to click comments Seven. here, I have 100, 100, 105 unread comments. There. Royals minus one half. That's the only way you can look at it. Uh, NBA today? Yep, we've already gone over all the games for today's card. There's no NBA today. It, it kicks back off tomorrow for the, the playing games. This is the one baseball game on ESPN+. Plus. That's brutal. Does anyone have a brand at ESPN? No. I thought we already knew this. Giants are minus 109 now. Yeah, people like Edward Cabrera. Yeah. ESPN Plus games have been so boring this year. Pat, uh, for the MLB, in my opinion, pass. Uh, we'll move on here. This is a game that, that has my interest a little bit. The Milwaukee Brewers and the San Diego Padres. The Padres minus 120 road favorites, total of 8.5 in this game. 
This line opened up with the Padres sitting at minus 120 favorites. Uh, it is now minus 112 on, on bet online for Milwaukee. So we've had dog to favorite flip in this game here. Uh, 78% of the tickets are on the Brewers. The line moving towards the Brewers. I do have interest in the Brewers. 50-50 uh, split on the total. The ultimate question is, are we falling for a trap here? Because we have... Joe Musgrove, now granted it's Joe Musgrove. This is his fifth start of the year, and he's been kind of up and down, and I need to start up my spreadsheet now. Uh, now that we have at least three to four starts for most of these starters, I will start setting up my spreadsheet for tomorrow's uh, slate, uh, where he's given up four and runs on five hits, three walks, five strikeouts, and four innings pitched against the Cubs. One earned run, five hits, one, one walk, seven strikeouts, and six innings against the Cardinals. Uh, four and runs, eight hits, one walk, three strikeouts, and five and two-thirds against the Giants. And in that 15-11 game, he gave up five earned runs on seven hits, two walks, two strikeouts, and two and two-thirds against the Dodgers. On the flip side, Joe Ross, who is bounced around to a bunch of different teams. My bad, not bounced around. He was a national. He The couple teams he was with were in, I believe, the KBO. Um, uh, cause this, this was his first, uh, these two games he's pitched so far this year were his first games in the major leagues since 2021 with the Washington nationals. He gave up Noren runs on two hits, five walks, three strikeouts and three and two thirds in the seven, three loss against the Minnesota twins gave up two earned runs on five hits, one walk, seven strikeouts and six and a third against the Cincinnati Reds. He looked great against the Cincinnati Reds. And I think he's worth backing in this spot. Um, I think the line move is telling you everything you need to know. Also, um, we have the Padres from Sunday Night Baseball. A big win and a series win against the Dodgers at didn't Dodgers. They, didn't they sweep them? No. No, they lost 5-2. Never mind. They lost the second game. But, yeah, fading the Dodgers every game that series was profitable. Very profitable. Um, and... Um, I'm going to be on the Milwaukee Brewers in this game. Yep. And I'm guaranteed at the very worst, Boston first five will be a push. It's mid five, zero, zero guardians and Red Sox. That uh, was we'll... so easy. How did we miss that under? Oh, oh. Fine. Don't worry about it. Um, I'm on the Brewers. I got them at plus 119. I'm seeing some now even money area for the Brewers. This is strictly, I mean, the Brewers are, have the best record in the national league right now, but yeah, um, this is strictly fading the Padres after last night. Um, and because oh, they, they win last night, big game. Now they have to travel across the country. Just a very tough spot for them. Um, so this one's a brewer spot for me. This was the first play besides the Orioles that I looked at when I'm betting this. So. Yeah, and also one thing I wanted to uh, one 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 more thing I wanted to mention with right. with me playing the full game with the Brewers rather than the first five, Fangraphs has um, the Brewers bullpen rated as one of the uh, uh, one of the better in bullpen and uh, the Padres bullpen not great. They have them in the twenties, and when you look at last night's game, they threw everybody out there to beat the Dodgers last night. We saw De Los Santos, we saw Matsui, we saw Peralta, we saw Suarez. We saw their entire top echelon of their bullpen. How many of those will be available for today's game as well? That's another thing that I would like to point out is that bullpen-wise, the Padres are depleted here too. Yeah. Um, Brewers, Brewers. Yes, Brewers. Today. Five games left, Nick. Yeah. Uh, and let me, I was I'm trying to lock in the, the Brewers. Oh, wow. That's up to a minus 116 now on FanDuel. I'm fine with that. That is what it is. Um, I'm not going to go to a different book just to get a cent better or whatever. I've already signed into FanDuel. So, uh, there we go. And minus 116 for the Brewers. All right. Uh, we have the Houston Astros and the Atlanta Braves, a rematch of the 2021 World Series. And um, definitely not the pitching matchup we were anticipating for, or uh, that we would kind of hope for in this type of game. But let's get into it here. We had the this game opened up at a pick 'em. It's now minus one thirteen for the Atlanta Braves. Line opened up at a nine and a half. 
minus 120. It's now a 10 at minus 120. So we've had a move towards the over, and we've had a move towards the Atlanta Braves. Um, taking a look at the cash flow here, 83% of the tickets and 90% of cash on the Braves in this spot with the line moving towards them. We have nothing on the total here in this spot. But with that being said, I think I'm interested in the over in this game. And I'm kind of uh, – and I mean, the, mar- the market, I was – at first, kind of interested in the Braves, but seeing the ticket numbers and stuff like that kind of halts my enthusiasm on that. We have an interesting pitching matchup because we have the season season debut of Darius Vines for the Atlanta Braves, who appeared in five games last year, started two of them, had a 3.98 ERA and 20 and a third innings pitched. Very limited sample time, sample size from Vines. On the flip side, Another guy we have basically no sample size on, Spencer Argetti, um, who in his first start went three innings against the Kansas City Royals and got lit up and smoked. Seven runs on seven hits, three walks, three strikeouts, and three innings pitched. Does he have a better appearance in him today? I can't imagine it gets much worse, but you do face the Atlanta Braves now instead of the Kansas City Royals. And looking at this game for me, I really don't have an interest in the side. I could see either side winning. Uh, I think that I think the Braves only minus one fifteen could be a little bit of an interesting, interesting little thing there. Public's on them. I have no interest in the side. However, I'm interested in the total, and I think both these pitchers get lit up and smoked today. And I can get over one. Uh, I can get over ten at minus one twenty on Caesars. I can get over ten at minus one twenty on Fanduel. I'm going to move on it on Fanduel here. Over ten with the pod uh, with the uh, Braves and the um, Astros. I kind of lean Braves in this matchup. Um, this is a Astros team that I don't trust right now that has not been playing well. Uh, and you're getting Spencer Spaghetti, um, who's coming off of three innings, seven earned runs against the, um, against the Royals. And this offense that he's facing is a hell of a lot better than the the, uh, Orioles, uh, sorry, than the Royals, um, Vines hasn't pitched this year yet. He's pitched all of five times in the majors. Um, that's the only reason why I'm staying off of the Braves. It's Braves or nothing in this one. I think that they continue to keep winning. Um, this this is a Braves team, although it is annoying, um, they're going to win a lot of baseball games this year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, ba, ba, ba. Brew Crew, Astros. Sheesh, I'm five and uh, three and five yesterday. Just noticed the Hurricanes minus one and a half cash. Uh, uh, I forgot. Uh, I bet that game and also cash a three layer. Nice. Get it, dude. The Braves are nothing in the over. I could definitely see the over, but I'm not. Bad. Four games left, Nick. Yeah, four games left. We're already at a, an hour and 57 minutes. Shout out to the chat who's been absolutely awesome today. Uh, one of the most live chats I've seen in a while. We had the Arizona Diamondbacks and the Chicago Cubs. Minus 140 for the Diamondbacks with a total of nine in this game. And let's take a look at the line history and this one here between Arizona and Chicago. There we go. We have Ben Brown taking on Merrill Kelly in this matchup here. This line opened up at a 140. It's down to a 138. So we've had a move towards the Cubbies. In this game, line opened up at a nine at even money. It's still a nine at even money. Uh, let's take a look at the cash flow in this game, which we have nothing for the cash flow for the side. And we have a fifty uh, or or yeah, no nothing, no tickets, no cash for the side for the total 50-50 split on the tickets. No cash flow here. This one, Ben Brown taking on Merrill Kelly. Ben Brown. This will be his fourth appearance of the year. He's gone one and third, where he got lit up against the Texas Rangers, six earned runs on five hits, two walks, uh, and one strikeout in one and two-thirds. He has m- been much better the last two games. Granted, he's faced the uh, he faced the Rockies at home where he gave up one earned run on three hits, one walk, five strikeouts, four innings pitched. And then he gave up no earned runs on three hits, one walk, five strikeouts, and four and two-thirds against the Padres. He's not going to go super far into games um, is one thing I've noticed with Ben Brown. On the other side, Merrill Kelly – is not somebody I'm overly thrilled with, but he's looked pretty decent to start the year. He gave up, uh, he's given up five earned runs in his 19 and two thirds innings pitch so far. Two earned runs, six hits, three walks, and four strikeouts, and six innings pitched again in his last start against the Colorado Rockies. He gave up two earned runs, five hits, one walk, four strikeouts, and seven innings against the Yankees. 
and he he's uh, he gave up one earned run on on three hits, no walks, uh, eight strikeouts, and six and two thirds against the Rockies. Let's see what he does against the team not named the Rockies, because I can see this as um, I I really like this Cubs team, and I'm very interested in the Chicago Cubs here. Um, this is a Cubs team I'm very high on versus the Diamondbacks team I'm very meh to down on a little bit this year. I think that the Padres are better in that division. I think the Giants are better in that division. We obviously know that the Dodgers are as well. Um, I'm interested in Chicago in this game, and I think I'm going to shop around. I'm going to bet some Chicago Cubs today. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. I, I really like Merrill Kelly. Um, so for me, it would be more towards the Arizona Diamondbacks in this one. I feel like the lines move towards the Diamondbacks already. Um, uh, trust me, Nick, I'm high. I like both these teams. That's the, that's the kind of tricky thing for me is I like both these teams. Maybe you look towards an under, uh, Ben Brown's look good as of late. And I could see Merrill Kelly having a really strong start. I feel like nine might be a little bit too high under would be a, a, an interesting look for me in this game. I, when it's two teams that I really like, it's hard. It's hard for me to fade one of them. Um, Cause if I fade one and lose, then it's like, well, I've been back in this team a bunch and all of a sudden I fade them. I lose. I'm not, I, 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 it's always tough when two of my teams that I I've been betting on a bunch and I, that I've been making money with are against each other. And this is one of those. So um, I know it's more of a rough kind of card, but another game I, I didn't get to. Took the Cubs my, uh, plus one twenty six on FanDuel. Who are these guys passing on freaking Houston? Oh, oh, who are these guys and you're passing? Okay. You were asking who the pitchers are and you're passing. I got you. Uh, one of them spaghetti. Um, Arizona run line, yes. D-backs, money line, parlay, sure. Starting uh, tomorrow, Fanatics is doing 5X profit boost per day um, for the play-in NBA, but you can use them on any sport. Love to hear it. Love to hear it. Brewers, Diamondbacks, money line, parlay. I like it, but Nick's on Nick's on Nick's on the Cubs. Uh, Bruins are minus one fifty now. Hmm. Three games left, Nick. Yeah, we have the St. Louis Cardinals and the Oakland Athletics. Here we have the Cardinals around minus one eighty favorites with a total of seven and a half in this game. Let's take a look at the line history in this one here, uh, where we get um, where is it? We get Sonny Gray and Ross Stripling. I like Ross Stripling a little bit for this Oakland team. Line opened up at a 170. It's up to a 176 now. So we do have a move towards St. Louis in this game. Line opened up at 8.5 at plus 105. It's now 7.5 minus 115. We've had a move towards the under. We've had a move towards St. Louis. 67% of the tickets and 59% of the cash on the under. We'll definitely move the line towards the under. Uh, and um, we have uh, no cash flow anywhere else. Um, let's see here. Sonny Gray. Um has pitched once this year. Yeah. He pitched on April 9th, gave up no earn runs on five hits, no walks, five strikeouts, and five innings pitched against the Phillies. Dominated them. Um, and then on the flip side here, Ross Striplin, uh, this is his fourth start of the year. He got lit up. He got hit last game. Six earned runs on 11 hits, three walks, five strikeouts, and six innings pitched. Granted, it was in Texas. It was his first road start of the year. His first two home starts went Okay. Uh, he gave or he his second one went better than his first. His first start of the year was four and runs on seven hits, two walks, six strikeouts, and five innings pitched. And against the Red Sox, he gave up one earned run on eight hits, no walks, seven strike, uh, seven innings, three strikeouts. So he looked good against the White uh, Red Sox there. This this number kind of points towards an under in this game. Um, this is a, a tough spot though, uh, a, a tough cap. Should the Cardinals be this big of favorites on the road? I don't think so. But if I am I interested in the Athletics? Not really. Um, I'm just just not. Um, I don't have enough information really to make a move on this game. Uh, the, the but we have a Oakland A's team that with a win and a Rangers loss is tied in first place. Uh, so, so so kind kind of interesting there. But yeah, no. Uh, who who had who had the um, potentially at the end of the night the top two teams in the American League West being the LA Angels and the Oakland Athletics. I hate you, I hate you. I was going to mention that the fact that at the end of the night I want to call them the first place Oakland Athletics. Give me the A's. Let's ride the wave. Um, 
Ross Stripling's been solid at home, as you mentioned. And um, this is a uh, uh, this is a Cardinals team that I'm very, very, very low on. Uh, I don't think they should be this big of favorites. I think the line's going to move down more towards um, the uh, Oakland Athletics as the day goes on. Um, I like the Oakland Athletics in this game. Let's ride the wave with Ross Stripling. What do you say, Nick? I'm tempted. I am tempted on this game. Um, I will take a deeper look into this um, as as you go over the chat. Gray's on the Cardinals. Yep, runner. Yeah, they, Boston didn't do anything. Uh, new teams, same Sony Gray, Nerfy. He's seen the A's before. First five under, maybe first five under. I can only look A's first five in this game because when you look at the bullpen here, the mat there is a massive advantage I think towards the St. Louis Cardinals bullpens wise, and also Mason Miller went yesterday, so um, they won't have their top their top guy. Um, Two games left. Yeah, and yeah, I pushed the first five with the Red Sox. Uh, there so my bets no longer going anymore so all right we'll move on cincinnati reds seattle mariners minus 150 for the mariners total of seven in this game let's take a look at the line history in this one here frankie montage versus george kirby this line opened up with the mariners if this will click that would be cool there we go as minus 130 favorites it's up to a 143 so we do have a move towards seattle in this game Line, on, line opening up at a 7.5 minus 120. It's down to a 7 at minus 115. So we have a move towards the under in this game as well, expecting Montaz and Kirby to pitch well. We have 67% of the tickets and 80% of the cash is on the Reds and the line moving towards the Mariners, which gives me public dog vibes here. The, Mar- the Reds look like public dogs here <laughs> today. 10,920 tickets in, 67% of the tickets, 80% of the cash on the Reds, with the line moving towards the Mariners. In this one here. And why not bet the Reds in this game? They're nine and six. They're competing for the top of the Central Division against a six and ten Mariners team that has looked like crap this year. And um, I mean, hey, uh, I, I am I am interested in the Mariners in the spot. Let's get into the pitching matchup here, where we have Frankie Montas making his fourth appearance of the year. His last start, he gave up uh, three earned runs on six hits, one walk, four strikeouts, and five innings pitch against the Brewers. His previous two starts, he gave up a combined one run, um, again, um, nine hits, three strike, uh, three walks, and nine strikeouts in 11 and two-thirds facing the Phillies and the Nationals. They won both those games. They lost his last start, though, against the, uh, against the Brewers. On the flip side, uh, this is George Kirby's th- fourth appearance as well. He had a great first game against the Red Sox where he shut them down. No one runs on two hits, two walks, eight strikeouts, and six and two-thirds. And since then, he's forgotten how to throw a baseball. Eight earned runs against the Guardians and an, and an eight-nothing loss, and five earned runs against the Blue Jays in four innings. Um, he's not looked good either start of his last two starts. And here's the thing, though, is the markets are screaming he bounces back in this game. The Lions come from a seven and a half down to a seven, and the Lions move towards the Mariners, even though all the money is coming in on the Reds. I think the Mariners smash in this game. I think they. I think George Kirby pitches well, and we get a Mariners team that takes care of business. And um, taking a look at the bullpens here, uh, the Reds are 14th, the Mariners are 12th. I'm going to take the Mariners minus one in this game, full game. I'm going to go full game with them here. Uh, my, Mariners minus one for me. Uh, yeah. I, I, I mean, you know my opinion on uh, – you know my opinion on Mr. Uh, Kirby. Um, and I know he's had a really rough start to the year. I don't really care. Uh, I think he finally gets his – I think he finally gets it going. Uh, keep in mind, his, his starts this year – Fantastic start at Boston. I'm oh, sorry, at home versus Boston. A rough start versus Cleveland. A rough start in uh, Toronto. Um, no, sorry. Good, uh, yeah, rough start in Toronto. Um, I think it's a good bounce back spot, especially at home for him. And uh, I'm still not sold on this Reds team yet. Um, we'll see how it goes. I know a lot of people are going to love the Reds at a nice plus price tag. I'll go the opposite way, plus 147 on the run line with the Mariners. Uh, my boy George, yes, first five for the 
um, for the Mariners and the under. I can lean towards under in this game. All right, Nick, final game, and I can already have a, a, an idea of where you're going with this one. I'm going to say I'm not betting this game, but good luck to you. Yeah. Uh, real quick, I'm just typing in the numbers for uh, so this one. Minus 102, by the way. Mariners minus one, minus 102. I will be betting that once I'm done with this breakdown here. Uh, we have the L.A. Dodgers and the Washington Nationals. I've already bet this game. This was the first game I bet this morning. And it's multiple things for me. Let's take a look at the line history. This line opened up at minus 320 for the uh, for the Dodgers. We're seeing minus 345 now. We saw minus 360 on Bovada. Uh, and the line opened up, or we have 8.5 minus 110, and it's still an 8.5 at minus 110. We have 9% of the tickets, and 88% of the cash is coming in on the Washington Nationals. 8,900 tickets in, 94% of the tickets, and 96% of the cash is on the Dodgers on the run line. 50-50 split on the total. That's why the line's not moved. Um, let's take a look at the pitching matchup here. And we have Tyler Glass Tyler Glass now taking on Mitchell Parker. If you've never heard of Mitchell Parker, he's making his MLB debut today against the LA Dodgers in Dodger Stadium in Chavez Ravine. Uh, quite the uh, quite the place to make your debut, isn't it? Uh, against Tyler Glass now, um, who is making his fifth appearance, and he's looked great. Uh, the mo- his worst appearance was against the Giants, where he gave up three and runs on four hits, two walks, seven strikeouts, and six innings pitch. He's looked good uh, all year long. Uh, so it's going to be very tough going up against Tyler Glass now here. But this checks multiple boxes for me. Number one, we're betting against the Dodgers every single game of the season. And this is a series where if the Dodgers lose two out of three, we're skyrocketing in the black, fading the Dodgers this year. Because uh, of the prices we're going to get back in the Nationals in this series. I bet that I probably bet this too early because I bet this line's going to move towards the Dodgers because the public is going to put them in their parlays and the and, and the public's going to love this Dodger team because they always freaking do. Uh, and let's see. Damn it. I could have gotten a better number on FanDuel now. And it's about the same for the first five. I got plus 270 for the first five and I got plus 290 for the full game. You can now get plus 310 on FanDuel. I feel stupid for betting this early. But I got plus 270. I got plus 290. First five full game, Washington Nationals for me. Minus 300 favorite. Minus 300 favorite fade here. All right, here we go on Mitchell Parker. By the way, this is a pass for me. I'm just going to reiterate what um, what we're looking at for Mitchell Parker. Mitchell Parker is the number 21 prospect for the Washington Nationals. No, not in the MLB, the Nationals in general. Um, he was drafted uh, in the fifth round, 153rd overall, uh, out of San Juanito Junior College. Who he, so he came out of a JUCO, um, JUCO. which is <laughs> – which is not particularly interesting. Scouting grades out of 100, uh, they gave him a 55 on fastball, 55 on curveball, 50 on slider, 45 on changeup, 45 on control. Um, he's going to get absolutely smashed tonight. There's a reason why this uh, line is minus 360. I would go towards the over in this game. I think this one can get very ugly for Mitchell Parker very quickly. Um, I know it's probably not a hot take saying that the uh, it's going to be a blowout tonight. Um I'm not going to touch this game. Um, I think that the Dodgers are this big of favorites for a reason. Um, So I'm not going to personally try to fade it. Good luck to you. I know you do your minus 300 fade, but this one's. Yeah. By the way, the minus 300 fade is first five and full game. Half unit. Huh? Half unit. I I, I put, I put full units on them both. I'm going to, cause they were, it was profitable last year. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with it. It was profitable last year. It was profitable the year before, and I think it's going to be profitable again this year, so I put a full unit on both. Uh, I'm 1-1 one one so far with the minus 300 fade. There's been one, and I was, I'm was i up 1.2 units because they won the first five and choked away the full game. Who was that? Arizona. They were plus or the, against the Atlanta Braves. The Braves were minus 300 with Strider on the mound, That's and right. they, they hit up Strider. They won the first five, and then they lost the full game. It was with yeah, Tommy no. Henry on the mound. Yeah. Um, but that is all the games for today. We'll do a uh, recap and the hat on out. Um, well, if you guys are new to the channel, like, comment, subscribe, share, do all the good stuff. Appreciate all the support. Check out all the links in the description below YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram. Plenty of YouTube shorts are up from last night's uh, stream with me and um, Craig for the NBA playoffs. So if 
you guys are interested in checking all those out. Uh, they're also up on TikTok. Not yet. Instagram. Not yet. Okay. I will, uh, They're going to be up on those as well. Make sure you guys are following those links in the description down below. Nothing for me in the NHL. Um, Oriole run line with, or yeah, Orioles today. Um, I have their the thing tweeted out for their um, stats with that. Uh, Giants in the over. Detroit Tigers run line plus one eighty. Um, and then Brewers. I like Oakland today and Seattle. Nick. Yeah, uh, in the NHL, I am on the Buffalo Sabres at plus 150 and the over at six at even money. I like the Comrie confirmation for the over, not as much for the Sabres, but who knows? Maybe he wants to play well, try to try to try to I don't know, get a spot for the new job next, next year. Roster, but he won't. Yeah, he he's gonna be. Yeah, the thing with Eric Comrie is you're gonna probably expect his best tonight. Because he's going to be trying to earn a roster spot if it's not for the Sabres, for somebody else. Yep. Um, which there are plenty of teams that Eric Comrie can start on. So, yep. yes, there, there's, there's, yeah. I'm on the Islanders at minus 105 over on FanDuel. I'm on the over six with Pittsburgh and Nashville, uh, minus 115. I got that on DraftKings. Minnesota Wild plus 140 on bet 365. In MLB, I got the San Francisco Giants minus 118 on FanDuel. I got Detroit Tigers first five minus 125 on Fanatics. Full game minus 115 on Bet365. Milwaukee Brewers minus 116 on FanDuel. Atlanta Houston over 10 also on FanDuel. Chicago Cubs plus 126 also on FanDuel. Seattle minus 1 minus 102 on ESPN Bet. Uh, Washington Nationals first five plus 270 on Bet365. And the Washington Nationals plus 290 full game on FanDuel. I'm I'm listing all the books out because I did that yesterday and that got me a win instead of a loss on one of the games with the Bet365 promo uh, with the up three goals with the Avalanche. So um, if you have access to the books, those are the books I would bet those at. Um, Bet365 is a great book for full game money lines because you will get paid out if your team goes up five runs or three goals or 20 points in the NBA, I believe it is. Um, or 21 points in the NBA, I believe it is. So there you go. So that's something to keep an eye out for. I list the uh, books for a reason. So there you go. There's my full card for today. Sounds good. That's going to do it for this edition of the Earl Sports Bet Show. We'll be back tomorrow with another one. Peace out, guys.